great days of Kansas Jayhawk football have returned. Touchdown, Jayhawks! Last season capped by an Orange Bowl victory. This season proved to the world that it wasn't a fluke. Boy, what a time for a sack. Tonight, Louisiana Tech gets their shot at the Jayhawks. These dogs have a hard-nosed ground game and extra fight in the secondary. And down he goes. Louisiana Tech takes on the Kansas Jayhawks as exciting action-packed college football kicks off next. Football Saturday and the Suzuki Quad Big 12 game of the week as this evening the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs taking on the number 12 team of the nation the Jayhawks of Kansas unusually cool conditions for this early in the season in fact chilly temperatures and we had rain over the last couple of hours and more rain in the forecast a little bit later in the Midwest hi everybody Joel Myers alongside Gary reasons and welcome to Lawrence but it used to be whenever you talked about the Jayhawks what a great basketball school and still very good national champions last year. But all of a sudden, things have turned around over the last seven seasons since Mark Mangino took over. Good thing going. Ten consecutive home wins. And in particular, the play of the quarterback has really put them at another level. A guy that doesn't make mistakes. Well, Coach Mangino has changed the culture. And also with a quarterback like Todd Reesing, you can make those changes. Just look at the numbers that he did last season. 33 touchdowns. All the records that he set for KU last year. And also this season. This year, he had 37 completions of school record in the opener against Florida International. He's a guy who's going to run the show. And he's very efficient with the football. Well, as good as they are offensively, they were one of the leaders nationally in scoring defense and total defense last year, and they've got three senior linebackers that spark it all. I'll tell you, these guys are a great group of linebackers. I don't think any single one of them is a great linebacker in his own right, but you put them all together, these guys are probably the best linebacking trio in the country. Joe Mortensen, Mike Rivera, those guys are going to have 27 starts after this one. James Holtby is 18th start. So these guys have a lot of experience, and they're big, and they're physical great group of linebackers. Yeah, very talented defensive unit with more on the Bulldogs from Louisiana Tech. Let's join now the third member of our team, Emily Jones. Well, guys, the most dangerous weapon the Jayhawks defense will have to contend with other than the weather, of course, today will be come in the form of a 5'8", 175-pound wide receiver by the name of Philip Livas. Philip Livas, not only a wide receiver, though, he is also a rusher, a kick returner, and a punt returner on top of all that. In fact, last week in the Bulldogs' win over Mississippi State in their opener, he touched the ball 11 times for 168 yards. Kansas head coach Mark Mangino said he doesn't blame the Bulldogs for getting the ball in the hands of Livas as often as possible, so look for them to do that today it should be a great day for football despite a few raindrops here and there we've got it coming up for you here on college football saturday presented by suzuki it is the bulldogs of louisiana tech and the jayhawks of kansas coming at you from lawrence we've got the kick when we return Welcome back to our College Football Saturday studios, brought to you by the Suzuki Quad Fair. Michael Lee's DeMarco Far with you here in Los Angeles. Last year's Big 12 champ, number four, Oklahoma, already in action earlier today, taking on Cincinnati at home. My favorite running back, not because his name is DeMarco either. No, it has nothing to do with it. I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's healthy. Oklahoma's a better football team when DeMarco Murray runs the football. Sam Bradford, game manager, only puts it where it needs to be so his offense can be successful. Bob Stoops, glad you recruited him. Four touchdown passes today for Bradford, but what about our game coming up? Todd Reesing, who exactly is he? Well, he's a guy who set two records last week in the season debut for completions and pass attempts, but he doesn't get much respect, especially from NFL folks. They say he's only 5'11", has a hard time seeing past his offensive lineman, but he can see over his coach, Chuck Mangino, and that's just fine for Todd Reason. Hey, the NFL better get used to 5'11 quarterback. There's a lot of them, and they're very good. Todd Reason's one of them. All right, how can Louisiana Tech pull the upset in this game against Kansas? I can tell you how. You have to play four quarters of football just the way you played against Mississippi State last week in the upset. They held the football for almost 11 minutes in the fourth quarter, would not allow Mississippi State to get that football back 
That's how you have to play to beat Kansas. Well, Kansas is good offense. They got a good defense, too. 14 points or less they've held their opponents to in nine of their last 14 games. Don't forget, folks, we've got more text time coming up throughout the day here on College Football Saturday. Get those questions in to 310-425-9455. And don't forget, we need your name. Got to know who you are. Mm. Well, the grill is hot. The food is good. We hope the football will be just as tasty. Kickoff is coming up next. Number four, Kansas, taking on Louisiana Tech. I Enjoy the, the game. On the left. Give me the one on the left. Welcome back to Lawrence, where just a week ago, home opener for the Jayhawks. It was in the low 90s, sunny. It was baseball weather. It wasn't football weather. And now we've got almost mid-November weather in the heart of the country. In Kansas, just about a 30-minute drive from downtown Kansas City, Missouri. Welcome back once again. Joel Myers alongside Gary Reasons. You saw the weather conditions, and they haven't improved at all. Emily Jones down on the sideline, and she gets the worst of it, Gary. Yeah, she definitely does get the worst <laughs> of it. Uh, be interested to see how, how it affects this game so far. We've had light intermittent rain. We've had some spurts where it's come down pretty well also. Feels probably got a little moisture out there. Derek Dooley, second season and uh, pick me up in his first year there. Son of your wondering of Ben Stooley and well, what a run his dad had. Now Derek qualified to say the least an attorney in private uh, practice until he decided to go into coaching. Yeah. So the head coach and the athletic director. Double duty over there at Louisiana Tech. Yeah, on the opposite side Mark Mangina will talk about him throughout the course of the contest. Ostricker kicks it away over to the nearest side. Marcus Herford, the return specialist, bringing it back, trying to bend to the boundary. He will be spun around, though. And will he turn the corner? No. He slowed down. First one in there for Louisiana Tech. Terrence Kayla was down there. The defense who's back, a sophomore from Patterson, Louisiana, along with Mike Compton. So deep in their own territory, Todd Reese and the Jayhawks offense. And, and a guy in... DeMarco Farr and Mike Leeds were just talking about a couple of the accomplishments last week. 37 completions. That's a new school record. And that came in the opener last week against Florida International. 37 of 52. A smart guy back there. He spreads the ball around very well, Joel. Little bubble screen action. And they kick it out to the wide receiver. Big time past the 25 on the reception. It was Damon Patterson, the speed burner, a true freshman. As we look at the starting lineup, along with Todd Reeson, our Liberty Mutual starting lineups. And Ryan Cantrell, their senior center out of Sugarland, Texas, started every game last year, so he's the anchor man in the middle. Jake Sharp will start, and he's out of Salina, Kansas. As the carry is over to the right side for Sharp. So good stock. I know about Salina, Kansas. My mother-in-law is from Salina, Kansas. Only good people out of that area of the country. He's a junior at 5'10", 190. He's your lead back. We'll also see Jack Crawford, a junior from Memphis, who's Cordova High School. And that's about four yards on first down. It'll be second and six from the and, 31. Yeah, and you're seeing no huddle here from Kansas going up-tempo here against this Louisiana Tech defense. He's spreading the offense with five wide receivers. And watch number 10 in the slot, Kerry Meyer, the former quarterback who had nine catches last week in the opener. High snap, good job of the 5'11 quarterback, and there's the guy I'm talking about. His favorite target last week, Meyer, passed the 35 to the 36, brought down by Calais. The man who made the spot stop on special teams. And now defensively, up front, Anthony Smith has the experience for Louisiana Tech in their 4-3 alignment. Quinn Harris, the outside back, he had a pick last week, talking about Tommy's playing today with a broken right wrist and a fractured thumb on the corner. That's Stephen House, who also had an interception last week. He is playing with a cast as well. Jack Crawford, the single to the backfield on third and a little more than two for the Jayhawks outside of their 35. Back off on the corner. Plum tight time. The slot man's got it. Big yardage down the middle. It's complete. It's Anthony Wilson for the first down. Yeah, yeah, Jonathan Wilson, sophomore from Houston. Jonathan Joel, Wilson. the thing that concerned Louisiana Tech defensively, Tommy Spang with their defense quarter told us we need to match up, match up with the personnel as they unfold and make sure that we're aligned properly. If you give Todd Reesing receivers the ability to get inside of uh, defensive zones like that, he's going to have a big day again. So moving from their own 15, the Jayhawks now. First and 10 to the 45 of the Bulldogs, Louisiana Tech. But defensively, the Bulldogs got better as the game went on last week. They got stronger. Man, they've had some some improvement. Over. Went ball. Snap there, ball. Right through the hands of Reese. And on the outside, once again, Patterson. 
The true freshman from north of Dallas and Mesquite, Texas, pushed out of bounds by Calais, the defensive back. Gain of three, and they're lucky they got three out of it. Yeah, if there's been a nemesis against losing a Tech defense, it leads to the number of points they've given up over the last couple of years. But from last year to, the two, excuse me, two years ago, from 2006 to 2007, they really made remarkable improvement defensively. And they feel like they're turning the corner. They're getting the pieces of the puzzle in place to where they can compete now, perhaps, against these schools like they did last week against Mississippi State. The recent calling the play at the line. He's got Crawford to the backfield on second and seven. It is going to be Crawford banging it off right side. And inside the 40 down to the 39, wrapped up by a D'Anthony Smith. You see the pace here for Kansas coming to the line of scrimmage, read the defense, and that's what uh, Todd Reesing does very, very well. Very efficient back there. He sees what's in front of him there, but well, they're going to put six in the box, seven in the box. They're going to load it with eight. You see the hot bunch out here. They've got a big diamond formation to the near sideline. Four receivers here on the near sideline. A little bubble, a bunch, as you mentioned, on the wide side of the field. The single on the far side is Desmond Briscoe. They're missing Dexton Fields, a senior receiver out of Dallas, who had 63 catches last year to lead the Jayhawks, but he injured his ankle after his first grab in the opener last week. Came down awkwardly on his left foot. And they're going on the street pattern down the sideline. It is complete. The single gets it, Desmond Briscoe. Des Briscoe had nine catches last week, Joel. Just get going once again here. Todd Reesing has single one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. They're going to use Briscoe on his size and speed to get outside. He's 6'3". Throw it up there outside. Excellent toss by Todd Reesing. Perfect throw to nice grab. So Reesing on early. All the way down to the 14. First and 10 Jayhawks. So Louisiana Tech trying to slow things down. Jayhawks now have converted on a couple of third downs in this drive. That was a third and three. It's Crawford. He struggles his way down to the 11 for a game of about three. And Gary, let's look now at our Liberty Mutual scouting report on the Jayhawks. Well, there's no doubt about that. They, today, they need to distribute the football. That's what Todd Reese is going to do. Get a lot of guys in the mix right there. And then their size, their offensive front, their defensive front, they need to be a physical football team. That's what Mark Mangino has brought to this program, the ability to be powerful if need be, to run the football and on defense be physical against the opponent. Now their quarterback, Gary, he's got great wheels. Todd Reesing, anytime he's touched the ball, uh, you can find the quarterback draw, you can get out of the pocket, roll off the edge. He is that good a runner as well. This is the slot. It's in out of the hands of Jonathan Wilson. Now you talk about Todd Reesing. You know, the thing that he does as a quarterback, he gives you the option of running the football. It's not going to be his number one priority. He's back there and throwing the ball around the day, but Todd definitely can run the football if need be, and he gives you that option. So defenses have to contend the with the quarterback as well as these receivers and the running backs as they spread out. So now it's going to be third at about seven. They can still get a first down inside the four and uh, make it first and goal. More conventional at this time with Crawford staying in the back. They'll tune each side out of the gun. It's not exactly a hurry up, as you mentioned, just a no huddle look. The blitz is coming up the middle corner of the end zone. In and out of the hands of Meyer. Had to wait. It was bottled and a good play on the corner. The free safety had him isolated. Antonio Baker, who also had an interception last week. Well, he's a guy that plays well for uh, Louisiana Tech defensively, no doubt about it. He's a junior, and he's one of the leaders back there in the secondary. And going out there against Kerry Myers, good coverage, as you said, Joel. And gets that ball out of there. I thought Kerry might have had a chance to pull that one in, but Antonio Baker gets it knocked away. Randstetter tries his first kick. As a Jayhawk, he just became eligible over the last 48 hours. A transfer from the Air Force Academy sat out last year. It'll be a 28-yard attempt. It's on its way. The Jayhawks are on the board after starting with it way back in their own 15. Looked pretty efficient. Had to settle for three, though. And Kansas for the Big 12. On top of the wax, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs in the early going. College football Saturday, all presented by Suzuki. Quad Fair 2008 is here. Get the best deals, lowest financing of the year on Suzuki's full line of performance-driven ATVs. Visit your local dealer today. Also by Jack in the Box. We don't make it until you order it. And by Advance Auto Parts. Keep the wheels turning. Welcome back to Lawrence, Kansas, one of our favorite stops of the Big 12. About 30, 45 minutes from downtown Kansas City, one of the real beautiful campuses in all of college football. As Beck and Libus are going back deep, waiting for the kick from Brandstatter. It's a 3 to nothing lead early. Libus is the one you got to worry about if you're the Jayhawks. This is a guy with lightning speed, a sophomore at 5'8", 175. 
a former running back in high school wide receiver for the Bulldogs. Branstetter down the middle, and it's going to be Eli to Shortland. He puts it on the ground, though. He retrieves it. Now, little lane coming up the middle. Good field position across the 28-yard line out to the 30. Tripped up by Patrick Resby. So Livas, too quick for his own good that time, looked up before he put it in his bread basket. And Taylor Bennett. It's an interesting story here. A young man from St. Louis played his college football at Georgia Tech. You heard me right. He graduated from Georgia Tech last year. Degree in international affairs. Well, he's working on his master's right now, and he got an academic waiver to play without sitting out for Louisiana Tech in Ruston. It's a nice story for him. Yeah, masters in business is what he's working on. Great way to give a chance to play. You get that waiver. It's not easy to get with the NCAA. He's got Patrick Jackson in motion out of the backfield. He bounced around in the first game and throws it wide of the intended target. Trying to get it to his tight end, Dustin Mitchell, but there was Joe Mortensen. He took way too many hits last week, throwing 40 footballs. Now our Liberty Mutual starting lineups now. As you look at the men up front, and the one that has been there a while is the junior at left guard who started a few times last year. And that is Ben Harris. In the backfield, you'll see Livas in a lot of motion from Livas, but Patrick Jackson's the key. Second team all whack last year as he ran, ran for just about a thousand yards. Four in the set, three on the wide side. They come to the single on the near side. It's complete to Josh Wheeler, the senior. From Texarkana, Texas, in front of Kendrick Harper. Short of the first down by a good margin, though, to the 35. Now, very efficient throw that time. Just sit, sit in the back in the pocket and throw it outside and take a little something. Now, what they need to do, they need to convert third down to. There's no doubt about that for Louisiana Tech. That's one of my keys for Louisiana Tech today is get that third down completion percentage up. You've got to keep the Kansas defense a little bit on their heels, if at all possible. Lavis down to the bottom of your screen working against Kendrick Harper. Movement up front, offside. It's a free down, and there's Lavis. Out in single coverage, first down, though. Decline the penalty and take it into Kansas territory. Boy, that's tough, even as good as Harper has been. Yeah, they had Joe Rivera offside there, the linebacker, or excuse me, Mike Rivera steps across the line of scrimmage, and that's the penalty flag, so they'll refuse that. Offside number 40. Decline. First down. Yeah, the live is in the open field. You see him in the secondary making a quick move to get open first of all, and then the, you're able to get a, a good gain after that. The Rock is over on the left side, and that's the senior from Stillwater, Russell Brosen. This is his third year as a starter, 22nd consecutive start. And all three of these guys are all Big 12. Joe Mortensen, in fact, first team all Big 12 last year. And Harper, I just talked about him. Transferred from Butler County Community College in Kansas. That's difficult duty. Livis, the motion man, gets it in rhythm. But it's tripped up and a good job to hold him to two yards. Rivera got him a little bit low, but took him down at the 41. Yeah, I expect to see the ball in Livis' hands about 10 to 12 times today. No, no doubt about that. They're going to use it and come around on the backfield. We'll hand it to him as they do on this play. And just a good quick snap to the quarterback and bring Livis around in motion to try to get outside the defense and use his speed. Nothing doing on second down, short game. Maybe two, two and a half for the running back, Patrick Jackson. 5'10", 205 pounds. He also caught 31 last year for Derek Dooley's squad, so he's a threat out of the backfield. It'll be third and five from the 38. Pocket holds up well this time. And behind the shallow cross of Libus. Now a little high that time. Bennett had Livas coming across. I don't know if he's going to be able to get the first down, but nice toss underneath there. Just goes through his hands. Balls are a little bit slick out there. Had the rain on the field. It rained almost until kickoff, Gary. And it was heavy just about 30 minutes before it started. They're going to keep the offense out there, so a gamble from the 38. You don't get a great field position for Kansas, but the Jayhawks already up three to nothing. Yeah, and this is what you have to deal with on the road. The crowd noise, they're getting into it re real well here. So on fourth, and right at five from the 38. Bennett wings it out, and way wide of Livas. Good coverage by Chris Harris, the sophomore on the other side, out of Bixby, Oklahoma. Yeah, just three receivers out in the pattern that time, and all of them pretty well covered defensively by Kansas, so they get the turn the down on stops here, so pretty good job of allowing, not allowing too much for uh, losing a Tech to get going. I talked about losing a Tech convert the third down, did not convert the fourth down there, but and what they need to do defensively is they need to find a way to affect Todd Reesing at the quarterback position, bring pressure, do some different things to get him out of rhythm. But that first drive that he had, no such luck. 
So much shorter field this time. They started at the 15 the first time. And a huge hole closes in a hurry on Crawford. And make it Jake Sharp. As he is chopped down after a gain of about two. And that is it. A nice lane. And it collapse with Brandon Jackson, the middle linebacker, coming over. Yeah, it's all starts up front here for Kansas, Joel. You got the center, who's a senior, and both guards, Hartley and Mays. You got Cantrell at the center spot. All three of those guys have a lot of experience here, and they're the ones that keep everything going there. You got two young tackles outside for Kansas. They, they graduated their, camp, their tackles last year. We got two redshirt freshmen playing today. Racing out of the gun. Good lane to see through. And he's got Briscoe. He's got a first down. And Briscoe stays on his feet off. Cross the midfield strike to the 45. Well, the way they walled things out, Gary, he had a good, clear field of vision. Yeah, no doubt about that. You, you can take your quarterback, let him step up inside there. He throws the ball easily. And Reesing has no trouble seeing Des Briscoe as he comes across the field. It's right there to him. And then run after the catch. Good size, 6'3", 200 pounder. Takes care of the football as well. Sharp turns the corner. The little guy gets outside. Brandon Jackson forces him up. A good yardage, six, almost seven yards on first down as we head back to the studio. Dr. Pepper game break time. And let's check in with Michael Eaves. All right, Joel, thanks a lot. It was business as usual in Norman for the number four ranked Oklahoma Sooner, Sam Bradford. Five touchdown passes today. This here, the second connection with Jermaine Gresham as they roll 52-26, seven touchdowns on the season through two games for Sam Bradford. All right, Michael, no surprise there. The running back had a good day. Bradford had a good day. We led all freshman quarterbacks in passing last year. And now time again. Little turn in route. And in and out of the hands. Loose wow. ball. Look at I found. Wow. Jayhawks get it back. And it looked like the D-back was going to have it. Terry Carter after it went through the hands of Damon Patterson. Well, you definitely had a catch by a Kansas receiver. It goes in the hands of a Louisiana Tech defender, then back out of his hands, back to Kansas. So take a look at here and see if the ball ever hits the ground. It stays up in the air and the ball is still alive. Just doesn't have a handle on it. Then Briscoe, he's going to get credit for a catch. What a break. So Briscoe with the first down after it left Damon Patterson. Raymond Brown, a senior from St. Louis, in for the first time. It's Sharp weaving his way off the right side. And a little stutter step to late. Wait for a block. He got four. He's down to the 17. Dropped again by the middle linebacker, Brandon Jackson. Right now, Louisiana Tech defensively is not doing anything to disrupt uh, Todd Reesing in this offense from Kansas. And they've got to find a way to get some pressure on him. Tommy Spangler, the defensive coordinator, has got to find a way to bring some pressure from the outside or some of the linebackers to make Reesing uncomfortable back there. But right now, nothing, nothing, nobody's getting to him at all. Crawford has taken over in the backfield for Sharp. It'll be second and six. The drive that started back at the Jayhawk 38 hasn't taken him long. They've already got a field goal, a 28-yarder for Branstead. Keeping it on the ground, Crawford goes his way. Two-yard shy of a first down to the 13. You know what's really surprising uh, about that field goal? All the points they put on the board last year, 42, almost 43 a game, second highest scoring team in the nation. Kansas did not score on an opening possession of any of their 13 games last year. That's really surprising. Didn't score a touchdown. Didn't score. Didn't score on their opening possession. A field goal or a touchdown. Really shocking. Yeah, they look back over to the sideline. As we said, it's not a hurry up. It's just a no huddle. It's going to be Crawford. And they stack him up short of the first down by about a yard after 12. So good surge by the defensive front. He's about a half. He got a good spot. He's about a half yard shy. Adrian Logan, the junior. Fushana, Louisiana. And all the blue shirts here at the stadium want him to go for it on fourth down. So what does Mark Mangino do here? Leaves like looks like he's leaving his offense out there. So Kansas, a little less than five and a half to play in the opening 15, will keep the offense on the field. Two tight end formation for the first time tonight. It's Crawford again. The only one behind Reese. Needs about a half a yard. Slowed down and stacked, and he may be short. He needed to go inside the 11, and it looks like he's short of the first down, and again, plugging it down low. And you talk about pad level low, Adrian Logan. Derek Dooley's hoping he's got, he's got a stop here from his defense, and to be a good defensive stand, Louisiana Tech is able to come away here. They're going to have to measure this, I believe. Yeah, Logan got the penetration. You can see him hanging on. 
Wow, this is going to be really close from our vantage point here. It looks like uh, those chains are going to be stretched out. It's going to be about a half an inch either way. He doesn't have it. Louisiana Tech is out. What a job by their defense on the road of the second series for one of the highest scoring teams in the nation. Well, Todd Reese has been throwing the ball very well, very accurately. They decided to run the ball four downs that time to try to get that first down. And play calling there, deciding to keep it conservative and run the football. But Louisiana Tech does a good job defensively of stopping it up in the middle. Now let's see if Louisiana Tech and both teams, Gary, trying to make it difficult for personnel changes on the defensive side have gone no huddle. So they come out outside of the 11. Tanner Bennett slings it to Livas. Looking for the little kick out. He got enough of a block from the other wide receiver on that side. And a good job by Cruz Williams, a true freshman from Little Rock. Well, what Louisiana Tech does is they utilize a lot of two tight end formations, Joel, offensively. They like their tight ends in their package, and they feel like they're versatile enough to be able to spread them out, and they're able to change things change things up offensively without changing their personnel. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Nothing there that time. <laughs> Gang tackling, maybe? The definition of Patrick Johnson pushback. Daryl Stuckey, the first one, the strong safety. So now it's going to be third in less than a couple of yards outside of the 20. That's an important third down here. We've got to convert these third downs if you're a Louisiana Tech fan. You're saying, hey, we got to make something positive happen. We've got to keep the ball offensively and keep Kansas's offense off the field. Well, Kansas did not have a great ground game last week. Johnson started to hit a little bit in the second half. He had 65 yards, scored twice. We're talking to the running back right now for Louisiana Tech, but he is checked out. And in fact, he goes over to the wing back position. It's a set up. In fact, Dustin Mitchell in that position. And a timeout has been called by Taylor Bennett. So a huge win early for Louisiana Tech on the road. Will the drive stay alive in Lawrence? We'll find out. Jayhawks lead it by a 28-yard field goal from Brandstetter, their new place kicker, a transfer from the Air Force Academy. And as you look at the advanced auto parts, Big 12 North standings last year, the only loss came at Arrowhead Stadium for Kansas. They lost to Mizzou last game of the regular season before the Big 12 title game. And remember, as good as the numbers were offensively for Kansas last year, their defense dominated at times. Eighth in the nation against the run, fourth in the nation in scoring defense. So you look at those gaudy numbers, 12-1, 7-1 in the North. And a record setting 12 wins last year. The defense had a lot to do with it. Now their defense tries to hold Louisiana Tech on third and a little more than a yard. Bennett leans and he got a good spot over to the far side. Who do they toss the ball to? He needed to go just barely across the 21. I think he's got it. Yeah, I think he's got this by a good foot or so. So they're going to move this ahead. Good job there converting on third down, third and short. Change up the formation, just get behind the big quarterback. Bennett does a good job getting in behind the center. And just enough for a first down. Louisiana Tech with momentum after their win over Mississippi State last week. First SEC team ever to come into Ruston. And they made the most of the opportunity. An eight-win Mississippi State team. Nice turn. And then torpedoing the play is Daryl Stuckey on Patrick Johnson. Gain of about three. Time for another game break. Michael Eves, what's the latest? Well, Joe, you were just talking about Missouri. The Tigers ranked seventh in the country, taking on Southeast Missouri State. Chase Daniel with the pitch. Perfect timing there to Jeremy Macklin. Three-yard touchdown run. And Missouri just like that out to a 14-0 lead. And Chase Daniel, Heisman campaign continues. Already six for seven, 100 yards in the first quarter, Joel. All right, Michael, they were impressive offensively at times last week. Not overwhelming, but very impressive. Even with 52 points on the board, some people might think that is strange, but even Daniel will tell you. Part of the snap, false start, 76 flight. Louisiana Tech, five-yard penalty. Replay, still second down. But back to what Michael Leeds was just talking about. And Gary, I know you watched the Missouri-Illinois game. Missouri offensively, they're not going to have issues. They will be a very, very good team once again with Chase Daniel. If they're going to be a championship team, though, they better get their act together defensively. Yeah, they got to find a way to you know, shore up a few holes there, but it's early in the year. That's why you play these non-conference games. Played a good one last week, a good football team in Illinois. And today they're just trying to try to get a little bit better each ball game out there. 
Bennett checking off at the line. He's got a second and long, second and a dozen. Short drop for the southpaw. And that's a long throw. It's complete. And boy, he drilled it out there. Yeah, that's a big time throw by Taylor Bennett. Sets in the pocket, looks to the right, and comes across the field to the left side. And this ball is actually thrown about 35, 40 yards from the quarterback spot. He puts it right on the money. And it's going to be just a little bit short here. Look at him set and throw the football. And that's a rope. Good throw to the true freshman out of Austin. R.P. Stewart at 6'3", 205. They've got some good-looking true freshmen that Derek Dooley brought in. Three that they'll use. We saw Cruz Williams earlier. Another guy at 6'3", 200 pounds. So good targets to go along with. Livas and Beck, their starters, roll back and Wheeler. Wheeler's already got a grab. It'll be third and about a yard. Jackson in the eye, and check that as the other little scat back. And the smaller back, Daniel Porter, gets it. Nifty move right at the point of attack for the junior from Baton Rouge. And another first down, yeah. getting out of the hole. No doubt about that. Getting some field position established here. A couple of first downs. Just getting ten and a half yards each time, though. But So nothing really stretching the defense down the field. Losing an attack is spreading the field across and getting those three- and four-yard gains. Derek Dooley's got a defense that has turned things around since he arrived. They were one of the worst defenses in all of college football just a couple of years ago. Drastic improvement last year, trying to keep them in the game tonight. And they did that in the last series. That time, though, Patrick Johnson had nowhere to go. Yeah, Maybe Brooks, a yard. Brooks gets off the tackle there, no the, off the block, and makes a tackle. He gets the help from one of the linebackers. So good job there by the defensive end. We've got a KU player down on the field, though. But they've already lost one. And that's their starting cornerback, Kendrick Harper. So Blakesley has gone down. And here's a guy, and there's, unfortunately, there is Kendrick Harper, the yeah. senior from Hartwell, Georgia. And they were supporting his neck and stuff on the sideline. We didn't really know exactly what is wrong with Kendrick, but uh, came to the sideline, and here's Kendrick Harper just making a contact here off of Livis, and it's kind of got jammed. Right. Hopefully so. just precautionary taking him inside, and then... So from one guy down to another, and that's one of the big guys up front, Caleb Blakesley. Blakesley. Yeah. Stay with us from Lawrence, Kansas. Returns as Washington State Cougars head to Texas. Matching up with the Baylor Bears. Coverage all starts at 12.30 Eastern. That's 9.30 out of the West Coast in HD high definition. Jackson brought down by a hold. And now into the third long situation. Not exactly the ultimate for Taylor Bennett. Now kind of a conservative play calling game here so far by Frank Selfo, the offensive coordinator for Louisiana Tech. And utilizing the run game quite a bit here, trying to move the ball. Effectively, but uh, now you got a third and nine situation. You're going to have to throw the ball down the field. You remember Derek Dooley told us a couple of days ago, though, Taylor Bennett got hit far too often in the opener. He was just 14 or 40. and make it 17 or 40 in the opener. But they got to him after he released the football. Now with an empty backfield, steps up, better pocket protection, and he will run up the middle, have the first down, and gets it back. I thought when he angled over to the left side, Gary was going to give it up, and he's got it to the 45. Brought down by Rivera. Good job that time by Bennett. He's only rushing three here for Kansas. Three down linemen. The linebackers all drop back into coverage, and he steps up into the pocket, seal, sees no pressure there, and says, hey, there's some real estate ahead of me. Let's go get it. And Jogs left, comes back to the right, and definitely gets the first down. So three consecutive first downs here for Louisiana Tech. It's a guy that started all 12 games last year. He's a rarity. All 12 for Georgia Tech. And now he's playing, working on his Masters in Business for Louisiana Tech. Now they started this back outside of their own 11. And now, all the way to the 45. Three consecutive first downs on the play fake. Bennett, good play fake. Deep over the middle. Limas takes it away from the defensive back and can't hang on. Harris tried to jump the route, didn't he? He thought he had it. No, good job that time by, I think it was Justin Thornton, probably came over the top there, yeah, Joel. The safety. 
Safety over the top right and make contact with Linus. So that's the end of a very entertaining first 15 minutes of play. And Louisiana Tech hanging right in there. They'll have the football when we come back, but it's a field goal difference. And Kansas is on top at home. Well, come rain or shine, tailgating must go on. And before the game, many, many Kansas Jayhawk fans breaking out the grill. And our tailgating report, as always, brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. A blooming onion would go quite nice with all of those tailgating Second items. Welcome back Before here to Lawrence. The Kansas Jayhawks on top of Louisiana Tech by a score of three to nothing as we begin the second quarter. And you saw Caleb Blakesley go off with a left leg injury. He continues to be worked on on the sidelines. It looks like they're looking at that knee pretty closely. And it's a shame that he did come off the field because defensive coordinator Clint Bowen said he was one of the guys he felt like surprised him the most in their season opener last week week he said he really disrupted things he ran to the football and he felt like he really turned a corner in that game so hopefully hopefully pardon me Blakesley's night is not done all right Bennett on the last play Gary he flooded that side and then went to Josh Wheeler yeah another little injury update looks like Kendrick Harper is uh, they've taken him off the field and looks like it's going to get him into the ambulance to further evaluate him and hopefully we'll get some word on Kendrick Harper as well it's a first down Wheeler can't hang on to the hot one on that side He's already got a couple of grabs. Missed all but four games last year you know, with this, an injury. Joel, this offensive line last week against uh, Mississippi State, they did a great job of maintaining the football. They didn't didn't allow was about 11 minutes of possession of the fourth quarter against Mississippi State. That that offensive line did a great job of running and protecting the quarterback and just take playing keep away against uh, Mississippi State. And it looks like they're trying to do that against uh, this Kansas team. This is the 14th play of the drive coming up, batted up into the air and almost intercepted by the young man we talked about, Russell Borson, who's just, he's a rock on the end. He doesn't put up gaudy numbers in sacks. He just shows up on every play. Just play, play, play at the top of your screen there. He's just going to come off the block and read the quarterback's eyes. He knows he's going to the flat, just gets up in front of it and almost comes away with a pick. And now it's going to be third and 10 at the 45. Louisiana Tech. Very efficient, four or five of their third down tries. So Bennett's going to work out of the gun. Three to the wide side of the field. Wheeler is the single to the bottom. Little middle screen. They got it set. It's Johnson, or Jackson rather, and he's got the first down. What a play call down to the 33. Yeah, it was against pressure from the outside, so the pressure really worked to the advantage of Louisiana Tech that time. The big tackle on the left side, Rob McGill, number 74, watching this wall the guys to the outside up here. No problem getting underneath, and Harper does a good job to get that first down. Patrick Jackson rather. He's a senior from Edgar, Louisiana. Porter takes over the backfield. Different look of the formation. The guy turns it over nicely, and he's got close to five on first down. So this has been a time-consuming drive. It started way back outside of their own 11, and you talked about the 11 and a half minutes that they had the football in the fourth quarter last week, and they did. They made sure Mississippi State could not come back from an eight-point deficit. A little ball control is not a bad thing, so you know they're going to hurry up no huddle offense here. They're just utilizing as much time on the clock as need be, and very comfortable, very similar to what Kansas does at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second. Inside of seven. Closer to six. And movement up front. There was contact. It was a false start, though, by the tight end, Dennis Morris. False, false start. 49, Louisiana Tech. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And that was one of the things that uh, when we talked to the coaches from Louisiana Tech, Frank Zeflo, the offensive coordinator, he was pretty displeased with his tight end's performance last week, and penalties kind of go that way. They weren't very productive catching the football, they weren't uh, doing what they needed to, so he thinks that they're going to have hopefully a much more spirited effort today. Dustin Mitchell as well as Dennis Morris. And they didn't beat themselves last week in winning the game. They only had six penalties for 35 yards, as opposed to 10 for Mississippi State. It's Porter making the first one miss in the backfield. And the big guy thought he had him. It was Jamal Green in the backfield. Joe Mortensen finally got to him. But that's speed. Yeah, Daniel Jamal Porter. Had, yeah, Jamal had one hand on him on the lower body. But the, just the strength of Porter utilizing his speed and quickness gets out of that. It's a good positive game here. So third and seven or third and eight for Louisiana Tech. Jackson back into the game. Porter had some big ones last year. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Utah State game, Boise State, they won't forget that either. So they need just about seven on third down. Bennett out of the gun. Pick up the blitz up the middle, so he's got the time and a bullet. 
It's complete for the first down. Man bringing it in. We were just talking about the tight ends. There's Dustin Mitchell, the tight end, making a huge grab in front of Strozer, who had a pick last week. Well, they're part of the offense. They're part of the package, and they want them to make plays and come across the middle field. The bigger targets, able to get the ball to him and get a good grab and a first down. You know, we talk about Mitchell with their staff. There's a guy they think can play on Sundays down the road. He's only a junior, though, fortunately, for Louisiana Tech. Long drive continues at the 20 of the Jayhawks. It'll be Jackson cutting it back. And maybe a yard. That is it for the 19. Pushed back by Mortensen. So their leading tackler. First team all Big 12 last season. They wrapped him up. A pretty good effort by this offensive front here from Louisiana Tech. Controlling things there. Taking, taking care of business. Giving a pretty good hold there for him. Just a... Miss one little block there on Mike Rivera. He comes in and makes the play. Pretty impressive drive, Gary. Yeah, it has been. They've maintained control of the football. They've taken, taken care of it. And haven't been huge gains, but they've just been methodically taking first, second, and third down. Three and a half yards a, a carry or so, and that's what you're getting. This is second down. Six of seven on third downs does not hurt. Going to be back underneath and behind Livis. So Livis was featured in the first drive that stalled after a couple of first downs, and they filled on fourth down. He has not touched it on this series, though. They've gone to other sources. Yeah, nothing vertical also against his KU defense. Everything very, very much across the field and shorter throws. Not too distant down the field, but uh, a chance now inside the 20-yard line. You might want to utilize those tight ends or your slot receivers to get up the seam and perhaps into the end zone. Three on the wide side, including Woman. Also in there, Stewart. So it's an empty backfield. You were about to say five. They've got five. Bennett with a run for it. He's only trying to get to it. Needs a block. Can't get a block for Porter. Down the sideline. A first and goal inside the ten. And the little running back came out and helped him on the edge. Yeah, and the quarterback does a nice job of getting outside and out of bounds. No need to take any contact. He knew he had the first down. They're Blake taking five on the outside five receivers. Watch the block coming back by the receiver. Going to get a block right there. Going to get Rivera. And that's exactly what you need to do to help a quarterback when he comes down. Bennett running for cover, got to the second line. Jackson back in there, first and goal on a drive. They get it. It'll be 89 yards. But they need to negotiate the last five. Jackson, the penetration of the back that barely gets back to the line. And yeah, that was penetration. Yeah, a lot Stuckey. of blue shirts. Stucky did a good job. A couple of tackles inside there. The defensive lineman doing a good job getting penetration up front. Johnson Green 97 and 99 watch them as they get back inside of the backfield and that's what causes a running back to run through and not have a hole there Good job of filling the lanes Honorable mention all big 12 last year for the junior from Kansas City, Kansas It'll be second and goal from the six It's been a half hour drive Jackson emotion out of the backfield spread the defense Bennett over the middle Bounced around and intercepted Off the hands of the intended target. It's picked off by Chris Harris. What a break. Stuckey may have deflected it. It looked like Stuckey. And Harris has the pick. Well, you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage to the outside. I'm very surprised that Bennett decides to throw the ball inside here. Huge play defensively for Kansas with the tip ball. So Reese into the offense back. Jayhawks hold after the long drive by Louisiana Tech. 10.40 to go until halftime. Kansas on top of Louisiana Tech by a score of three to nothing. And this is a guy that many Jayhawk, all Jayhawk fans will recognize. What am I talking about? Bill Self, the coach of the national champion Kansas Jayhawks of basketball. I was driving into town, coach, and it says, welcome to Lawrence, home of the 2008 national cha champions in men's basketball and 2008 Orange Bowl champions. Good time to be a Jayhawk, isn't it? It's got a nice ring to it, I think. No, it's a great time. And, you know, the weather's not great tonight, but our, our football team's good. And, and uh, I think they're going to have another great season. Are you are you okay sharing the spotlight? I mean, this is considered a largely basketball school. I say largely because Mangino's creeping in on you a little bit, isn't he? Well, I, I think it's I think there's plenty of room for both. Uh, uh, you know, Mark says all the time. Last time we checked, I don't think we were on each other's schedule this year. <laughs> so so I know we want them to do well, and, and nothing sets the tone for enthusiasm on campus like the football team playing well early. What's the offseason been like as the national champions? It's 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 beats the alternative, but it's been it's, it hasn't been all rosy. It, we've we've had our few obstacles, but but everything's gotten back to normal for the most part. We, we got a, 
We got all our players cleared and, and uh, eligible and in, in classes now, which was a big concern of ours. And, you know, and and uh, but I, I really like our young kids. We're we're gonna we're gonna be pretty good. We're, we got a long ways to go, but they remind me so much of that of this the team we had last year, three years ago when they were all young. Do you see the benefits of the success that that Mark Mangino has had with this football team in your program? Absolutely. You know, football more so than any sport benefits the entire athletic department because there's there's more possibilities for, for revenue so uh, uh, he's done a remarkable job the players work hard they do it the right way and, and of course bringing recruits in on, on on great you know festive football weekends I think does a lot to sell your program. Bill Self, thanks so much for braving the elements with me. Looks like you're bringing your Jayhawks some good luck as well. Go back up to your luxury suite now coach. <laughs> back up to a couple of other guys in a pretty sweet spot. We're not complaining. Desmond Briscoe. Middle of the field available, and no safety came over to help. Yeah, we're getting some football action here. Can just kind of unleashing it, going down the field. Des Briscoe here, I think his third or fourth catch in the ball game. It'll be a first down at the 41. Out of the gun. Reese now sixth all-time in passing yards. Uh, I said he's got some decent wheels. He's tough kid, doesn't mind pulling it down. And he's got it down to the 36 for the end of about five. Darby got to him there. Middle linebacker. Yeah, up tempo here by Kansas offense. Who they're they're going to try to pace this Louisiana Tech defense and try to get some things called quickly up there, I believe. And they don't want them to change substitutions. Looks like Louisiana Tech is trying to get some other personnel on the field. Yeah, a little quicker now. The rhythm to this set as opposed to the first two series for the Jayhawks. And now he slows it down though. Make sure the personnel cannot be changed for Louisiana Tech. Trips on the wide side of the field. And Reesey throwing it up the grass, getting it over the hand of the defensive back. What a great play by him. It looked like as Deion Young made the play, it looked like he was going to get a piece of it. Well, Kerry Meyer, you can see him down here at the middle of the field, and he just goes to the outside. Former quarterback and now wide receiver for Kansas. And you know, he's a guy out there, he's a heady guy, he knows his system, and heck, he's a great athlete as well. Catches the ball very, very well. And, Big part of this Kansas offense. What a start for Reese. He had 62% of his passes last year. Meyer, tough catch in traffic, dumped immediately by Weldon Brown. And with that completion, boy, what a beginning. Nine, make it 10 of 12 with that grab on the passing of Reese. Well, very efficient here, throwing to, again, sure-handed, great athlete, Kerry Meyer. And lots of people thought when Kerry Meyer came to this program that he was going to be uh, the next star quarterback for the University of Kansas. Played a little bit there, but uh, things were to be and now he's found a good spot as a wide receiver. There's Briscoe. Can he get there inside the five first and goal? Boy, great pocket protection to allow the quarterback reasoning to naturally go through his progressions. Well, you take a look at your, your people you block around while you got to have your running backs blocked as well. And you can just tip one over like that. That's pretty good stuff. And Reese just dots the eye right in the middle of the field there to Briscoe and nobody within five yards of him. Reese on first and goal corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Into the corner, Patterson's got it. Jayhawks add to their lead. Well, Patterson's the inside receiver here, and he's going to take it back to the back corner of the end zone. He's got, Reesing has confidence in him that he's going to run the route and get to the spot there. Patterson does a nice job of getting separation, and the ball was perfectly thrown. Good looking true freshman. They returned to punt 75 yards for his score last week. And now Brandstetter out a lot in Oklahoma. Up and through. And it's a, boy, that's a heartbreaker. Louisiana Tech held on to the football for nine and a half minutes. They don't score. And in a couple of minutes, Kansas comes down and drills them. Ten to nothing. College football Saturday, all brought to you by Liberty Mutual, providing auto, home, and life insurance from a company that's as responsible as you are. Responsibility, what's your policy? Also by Sport Clips. Guys love sports, guys get haircuts. By Ranger. See it up close at your local Polaris Ranger dealer. And the first down marker, all brought to you by Overstock.com. Your tire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock. Overstock.com. At home with the big O. We had our Suzuki quad scoring drive for the Jayhawks. Three minutes. That's all it took for 80 yards. And that's after Louisiana Tech had it for 9.23 and didn't get a point, Gary. You talk about frustration. 
you know, the guys that are white jerseys had a great drive, but no points getting inside the 10 yard line of the Jayhawks and come away empty handed. As you said, Joel, turn, they turned it around very, very quickly and put seven up on the board in less a little over three minutes. Brandstetter kicks it away from the 30 and Livis back weight. And it's going to be Livis from the six. Speedster across the 20 out of the 25. So decent field position for Louisiana Tech on their third series of the contest. We'll find out how they respond. Can they recover? The early haymaker. Coming up on the College Football Saturday Halftime Show, we're going to revisit one of the more controversial calls we've seen. Too excited, Mike. Excessive celebration. Bring it back 15 yards. He's always excited, though, because he loves text time. We need you to be a part of it as well. There's the number right now. Back to Joel and Gary. It'll be a first down for Louisiana Tech. Right before he broke away, wondered how they respond. After the disappointment, Bennett, nice footwork, and then overshoots his target on the far side. And I think he made a bad decision there. He had a lot of real estate in front of him that he could have gotten five or six or maybe seven yards to run, but he throws one high and out outside. That goes the miscues tonight, and Derek Dooley knows that he's got to play error free, especially when you come to a place like Kansas, who's done very, very well at home. And Great numbers here for Mark Mancino, the life of his program. He had a tall target over there in Dustin Mitchell, who's Patrick Jackson, who's collared. Gain of about a yard, so it brings up again a third and long. Louisiana Tech is seven of eight. Great numbers on third down so far, but about three of those seven that they've converted have been third and long. And on the road, that is done. They got to take it past the 34. He keeps the tight end, Dustin Mitchell, in the backfield with Jackson. Over the middle, and deflected. It looked like it was going to be short anyway, but dropping in coverage and getting a piece of it was Daryl Stuckey, the strong safety. Well, we talked about the miscues. We talked about you know, being able to convert on third down, and Kansas at home, what they've done has been pretty dominant here. Ten straight home wins, and look, numbers there, 15 straight wins against non-conference foes, and 7-0 at home in 2007. Already got one here in 2008, so they've done a great job of protecting their turf and scoring points as well. Cagle he is going to punt for the first time. First team all whack last year led the whack in punting. 41 plus yard average and hangs up a real high one. A short one as Patterson calls for the fair catch. Runs into the back of his own man at a break for Kansas. It didn't touch anybody. It goes out of bounds. He walked up the back of Isaiah Barfield, the cornerback. So not exactly a ton of communication right now, though. Mancino's trying some of that with Barfield. We do have a flag back at the original line of scrimmage, so we'll keep it right here. With 6.31 left in the half. Yeah, Coach is gonna take the ball at the spot where the ball was punted to, so probably gonna refuse this penalty. After that collision, I would. Legal formation, kicking team, only six men in the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty will be added on at the end of the kick. First down. So great field position coming up for the Jayhawks as we've got a timeout of the field. Now we will take a timeout with the guys downstairs. Jayhawks get it back close to midfield and they're on top by 10. Champion Apparel salutes the history and tradition of the Big 12 Conference. 2007 was a banner year for the Kansas Jayhawks. Rock Chalk Jayhawk was heard echoing all throughout Lawrence. In 2008, expectations are high, and there's no place quite like Memorial Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Get ready to wave the wheat. Kansas is back for more. Champion, it's how you play. Jayhawks up by 10, and they get it back at their own 40-yard line. And I remind you, all season long, champion apparel will be showcasing the history and traditions of the Big 12 Conference. Tonight, we highlight the Jayhawks. Champion, it's how you play. So the best field position to start a drive for the Jayhawks, their own 40. And Reese checking off at the line after he brought the play from the sideline. And a little pick action out there, the block. 
is by Wilson for Patterson. And Kayla made the play at about the 44, so it could have been more damage, but a good job in the secondary. And it's a gain of about four. So Welcome me back to Lawrence. Joel Myers, Gary Reasons, Emily Jones downstairs on a wet and chilly night in Lawrence. Six plus to play in the half, and Reesing and the Jayhawks get it offensively for the fourth time with a 10 point lead. Yeah, what I like about this offense, Joel, is how they mix things up. They'll take it from sideline to sideline, they'll utilize all different types of personnel groupings. Not afraid to put it in a lot of people's different, different people's hands in the ballgame. Little option action. Little wrinkle, sharp pace on the boundary gain of only two up to the 46 punched out of bounds with a strong side backer Brian White and all these different little wrinkles they take time and preparation this team they're pretty polished on their effort and what they do out there very efficient quarterback and in Todd Reese we've talked about him all evening that uh, making just great decisions with the football so far look at the third and four as they are two or four the Jayhawks on their third down tries Going to empty the backfield, so five wide receivers set up in the pattern. Needs four, could run four to be one stop, and now indecision. Will it cost him? No. Gets a little seal and oh, a quarterback to another quarterback. Reads it well and helps his teammate out. Well, with protection up front, this is exactly what Kerry Meyer, excuse me, what allows him to get the ball to Meyer. Todd Reesing's got a center up there, and Ryan Cantrell, who, you know, he's on the Remington watch list, and he's a pretty heady guy, and just holds out that nose tackle, don't let him go anywhere, and then you see Reesing come up in the mix, and no chance for the big tackle, defensive tackle, DeAnthony Smith to come off. How about the start for Reesing, Gary? 14 of 16, and that's his eighth straight completion. This guy doesn't get rattled, does he? He just hangs in there. So the patience paid off on that play. It'll be first and 10 of the 45 of Louisiana Tech. Again, wow. time. You said a half hour back there. No gain on the carry. Well, they only rushed three that time, so oh, all three easy. of them were definitely <laughs> locked up by the offensive line group. And Reesing that time steps up in the pocket. Maybe they didn't even have to step up. He just had to step up and read around more, but decided to take a little dive there at the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 at the so now time of possession belonging to the Jayhawks over the last few minutes of this contest after a long drive. The most successful nine and a half. That's how long Louisiana Tech held on to the football. But a pick in the end zone off the hands of their tight end. Ended up in the arms of Chris Harris. The Jayhawks converted a score. Shutting them out so far. Now a ton of time again for Reese. Coming back for score, but he ready to run before he had the football. Tried to pull it off in front of Weldon Brown. So now it's going to be third and 10 from the 45. And he wanted Terry Meyer on a little wheel route, come inside and go back out, but De Meyer lost his footing at the top of the screen, so had to come back downhill to Briscoe. The first down marker all brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% on brand name products every day. It's Overstock.com. At home with the O. So the number 12 team in the nation, the Jayhawks in Kansas. At home up by 10. And now they need 10 to get a first down and keep the drive alive. Spread the ball around. He's shown back. Briscoe won't get there. Great open field tackle by Weldon Brown, the senior from Bossier City, Louisiana. And you got Briscoe at 6'3", 200 pounds, streaking across the field and catching the ball in stride, and, and you're able to make this tackle. That's a good job by the defense of coming up, making good, sure tackles short of the first down marker. So it's going to be fourth and short here for uh, for Kansas. And we're going to take a timeout and consider this one. We had Bill Self down to the sideline. As you look at the advanced auto parts, the leaders from last season in touchdown tosses, Todd Reesing. A couple of missing there that have graduated, but the guys that are back, as we think about Colt Brennan and some of the others that did leave, man, has Reesing been on once again. Yes. And, and I said spreading it out where Patterson's got five grabs, Briscoe's got four, Myers got four. Well, that's what they need to do is spread the ball around, and they utilize a lot of different players out of the backfield as the receivers. And Briscoe's done a good job catching the football. Kerry Myers got any action as well. He had nine grabs a week ago, so nothing new for Todd Reesing. He throws the touchdown pass in the end zone to Patterson, so 
A lot of different guys get in the mix here for Kansas, and that's the that's what this offense is designed to do. Spread the defense out, take advantage of the mismatches. Well, we had Bill Self down on the sideline with Emily Jones. Good to be a Jayhawk, and he had a good time talking to Emily about it. When Mark Mangino got here seven years ago, they won two games. And when we talked to Mark earlier in the week, and I congratulated him because they had better than 52,000, a, a record-setting crowd for a non-conference World International to open the season. Mark started laughing. And, and went through some of the things that have transpired over the seventh season. We'll get back to it after this fourth down, though, because it is ironic the way things have transpired to the point where they're an Orange Bowl winner. And Bill Self and the Jayhawks, the champions of college basketball, all in the same year in Lawrence. Underneath first down, Karen Meyer makes a miss, runs through the arm tackle, and gets extra yards as he got away from Dominique Faust. House finally caught up with him, but he got a first down to the 28. And all, uh, well, Mark Mangino talked about it as we look back at the play. Well, did nothing new here for the carry. Meyer just get this spot and look for the football because it's coming. You got another quarterback back there that's got confidence in you as a receiver because he knows you know the offense and you're going to be very productive. Jack Crawford gets about three, but to put a tag on what Mark Mangino was talking about and laughing about Gary, he said, you know, when we got here, I, I thought maybe I was mistaken and time of day or maybe we they didn't know we were playing because there were people outside. They were skateboarding. They were throwing the frisbees. People were walking dogs. They, it was like they didn't know a football game was going on around here. There was a lot of people <laughs> on campus not aware of the football program is what he's alluding to. That has all changed. <laughs> he had over 52,000, a new record. The, the old record was set last year for Nebraska, 51, 910. Over the middle again, Kerry Meyer. Boy, are these guys in communication with each other. Inside the, and Meyer's a good sized target at 6'3, 225. Big kid out of Pittsburgh, Kansas. Now remember, he's another quarterback, so don't be surprised if he gets the ball in his hands and chunks one here today. But as a receiver, doing a great job here. We talked about him last week against Florida International. Came up with nine grabs. He's had a pretty good night here so far as well. Let's head downstairs. Emily Jones. Guys, I don't know if you can tell up there, but down here it is coming down harder than it has been all night. So the rain definitely going to uh, take a toll on this game, whether it be positive or negative for either team remains to be seen, but the Jayhawks moving the ball well right now. Really strange weather. Not necessarily the precipitation, but it's it's chilly. Usually it's warm. Uh, Indian summer, September, October, it's beautiful. A little screen out to the flanker. Didn't fool. Louisiana Tech, they covered it well. Gain of about four, though, down to the eight. Christian Lacey. As Wilson grabbed it, Lacey over there wrapped him up quickly. Now, these receivers, they flip sides of the field sometimes when they come back to the line of scrimmage and changing up the formations all the time when they go back to the line of scrimmage. Everything is all different every time each time Louisiana Tech looks at this defensive this offensive alignment. Final two minutes of a productive first half for the Jayhawks. And especially on the defensive side, where they have not given up any points yet. On second and a half dozen. Reeson's got room over the middle, and he's got Meyer just out of the green. Back of the end zone. And he had a beat on the safety Baker. Well, one of the things I've seen in this ball game about, uh, about the offensive line here for Kansas is they're keeping their quarterback clean. No one has really touched Todd Reeson or put any a lot of pressure on him, making it to a lot force him to cause bad throws. And they've done a good job of holding out the Louisiana Tech defensive front and there's blitzes that when they bring pressure. So from inside the eight, it's going to be third and six. Keep Jack Crawford in the backfield, working out of the shotgun. Trips on the wide side, the single. He is going to be once again Desmond Briscoe, and he usually has gone to the single when he floods one side. And at least percentage-wise, that's where Reese has looked. Now he goes to the side he floods and overshoots Kerry Meyer. He's just coming out of his break. Uh, against Deion Young, the safety. And I think Kerry Meyer wants a flag on that one, thinking that the defender had a had a hand around Kerry Meyer, not allowing him to get come off that break. But the turf is a little wet, as Emily Jones talked about. It's coming down here, the rain, light rain, and perhaps the footing is not as good as you'd like it out there. Well, Brad stetter has got a 28-yarder, his first kick as a member of the Jayhawks after transferring from the Air Force Academy and sitting out last year. This is going to be a 25-yard attempt, so only five yards more than an extra point try out of the hold of Kerry Meyer. And three more on the board for Kansas. So the Jayhawks have a 13-0 lead with 96 seconds left in the half. Well, Indian summer, my favorite time of the year to come back to the Midwest by far. It is so beautiful in this part of the country in September and October, but as Emily Jones said, on a Saturday night, we have some fog as a factor in the second half of this game. <laughs> it's that kind of night. 
not exactly typical. Well, there's no there's no fog in front of Todd Reesing's face because he's pretty efficient tonight with what he's done with the football, finding different receivers, getting everybody into the action, and just being very efficient with it overall. It's a good fireplace night, isn't it? Tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday returns. Terry, Howie, Jimmy, Kurt, Frank are joined by new coach Michael Strahan. Final word of the Brett Favre saga. And what kind of season is going to be for the Cowboys? Four drive one Fox NFL Sunday pregame show tomorrow. It all starts at noon Eastern and nine out of the West Coast. But for what really counts, the Midwest, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. You got that guy, uh, Michael, <laughs> Michael Strahan, going to join that crew? <laughs> he almost, once a good I went down, he almost. Our Jorman Euro went down. He almost for your Giants. But what about those people protecting? Sitting in those lazy boys. They've got some great seating out here at this uh, south end zone for Kansas now. They've, they've put it together. Those are leather reclining seats and they've got uh, flat screen TVs in front of them. I mean, those are, those are uh, well, how I like to watch a ball game. Now, did you think comfort. when Jorman Euro went down, did you think that Strahan was going to come out? No, not at all. I, I you know, he had made the decision to go, uh, go to retirement and, and uh, you know, he, he, you know, tried to, they tried to get him back. They tried to put a number out there that would good, <laughs> be good for him, but he knows that he was not in shape, and I think that's the biggest thing. It'll be Livas from the five. He's yet to get on track. He's got the speed. You can see good wheels. Yeah. Hits a little crease past the 30. Found a lane to the 31-yard line. So Louisiana Tech with an opportunity now and still two timeouts on the board. So plenty of time with a minute 29 left in the half on our Suzuki quad scoring drive it stalled once they got and a first and guards inside the 15 what's first and goal yet well, now Louisiana Tech comes back with you know minute and 39 seconds left to, 29 seconds left to go here in this half will they stretch the ball down the field and try to challenge this Kansas defense they have not done so tonight they've decided to go pretty much horizontal across the field spreading it out so you just to see what their mindset is Taylor Bennett trying to set up a middle screen. It was lucky that it was thrown at the feet of Daniel Porter and incomplete. So that'll stop it. Bennett with that miss is now 7 of 18 for 79 yards. The young man who played at well, Georgia Tech talked about that. A starter all 12 games for the Yellow Jackets. Now last week. Go ahead. Now is that going to be the same for the Bulldogs defensive unit? Jeff just 3 of 7 in the third down tries. It looked like frustration from Reason looking over the sideline for the play call. The pick up the man over the middle and it's Briscoe on the catch and I was talking to the pass rush because they accounted for the extra rusher Briscoe's dropped immediately on a nice open field play by Weldon Brown Yeah, I think it's gonna be just short though Harvey fourth and one fourth and two though Briscoe coming across the field He got a first down and nice catch on this in the first half similar play similar situation But just a little bit short so the Bulldogs is gonna Turn the Jayhawks away again on defense and in formation formation for Kansas, Kansas, number 18, so the punter in for the first time for Kansas. That's Alonzo Rojas, who had a good start to his Kansas career last week. A sophomore from Miami's Killian High School, a transfer from Bowling Green, hangs up a high one in the back, takes it in inside the 15 in traffic and down back at the 13. So that's where Louisiana Tech will have it when we return. Sluggish beginning, to say the least, to the start of the second half. College football Saturday, all presented by Suzuki. Quad Fair 08. Get the lowest finance of the year on Suzuki's full line of performance-driven ATVs. Also brought to you in part by Valero, the All-American Gasoline, the Great American Highway. By Polaris, the world's toughest ATV. And the first down market brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% on brand name products every day. Overstock.com, you are at home with the big O. Joel Myers, Gary Reasons, Emily Jones back in Chile and at Lawrence, Kansas. Close, so close to that good barbecue in Kansas City. Jackson trying to go off right tackle. A couple of yards up to the 15 yard line as the Kansas defense pitching a shutout. And some little change here in Kansas. Bill Young had been a co defensive coordinator. Clint Bowen, his co, well, Bill Young departs. It's now. Yeah, he, gets, he gets to move up to the, to the task and doing a good job with here. And he's a former KU player, so he knows the, the culture here. He knows and understands the program. And it's been five years at KU as a special teams coordinator. Now he's moved on up to the coordinating role and doing a nice job with this group. The blitz on Bennett, but it'll be a false start. Dead ball foul coming up against Louisiana Tech. Don't mm -hmm. tell Bennett that after he took a pop. Snap. False start. 
43, Louisiana Tech, five-yard penalty, still second down. You know, Clint Bone, he uh, goes back a ways, and actually a player here for for Candace in his heyday, and doing a nice job on the outside, almost a horse collar tackle there, and I think he gets a pick here on this play. Good job by Clinton. Didn't fall far from the tree. Grew up in Lawrence, played high school ball here. And now he's probably got his dream job as a coordinator here at Kansas. Markoff back to the 10, makes it second at about 13. Bennett for right two, and he didn't expect it, Mike Rivera, because his receiver, Livas, never saw it. Well, Mike needed uh, some Velcro on his jersey that time because he certainly <laughs> didn't get his arms up. He didn't expect that football. See the pressure they're coming, and bingo, right, right on the 40. <laughs> he was the target. You know, linebackers are, are there for a reason, Joel. You know, that happens sometimes. Some guys, some of those guys are better on the offensive side, some on the defensive side, and Rivera probably better off where he's at. I'm not pointing a finger at you. No, no, no. Linebackers. <laughs> 13 to nothing, Kansas on the delay. Jackson tried to make a miss. Needed another block. Rivera drops him. And it's going to be Louisiana Tech punting a deep from their own territory once again. Yeah, good defensive stand there by the Jayhawks. Not allowing anything to get going there for Louisiana Tech. And going to flip the field here. Going to just kick the ball down again and try to get good field position for, for Candace and her offense coming back. You know, special teams for Louisiana Tech last week were key in the football game and really helped them propel them to win the game with coverage, with kicks, with returns as well. So they've been playing pretty decent special teams. Now, Kansas in their own right, they've been a team in the past that's, uh, that's had pretty good efforts on special teams as well. Cagle, close to his own goal line, had to hurry it, and it's his best of the day. And we'll get a return here. Patterson from the 39. Didn't go out of bounds. Now it's just barely bumped out. Everybody relaxed like he was going to go out of bounds. He didn't stop though as he's knocked out at the 48. What a block by Stephen Foster. Coverage by number 27. So Kansas is going to have it in great field position plus territory. Leading by 13. Kansas starting with the football in Louisiana Tech territory. I will remind you, tomorrow, NFL on Fox regular season. It all starts. Exciting twin bill. First, Bucks matching up the Saints. Or you could see Rams, Eagles, Seahawks, Bills, Lions, Falcons. Second half, Cowboys battling the Browns. Or some of you see the Panthers taking on LG and the Chargers. Or the Cardinals 49ers. It starts with the four drive one pregame show at noon Eastern. Nine Pacific and HD only on Fox. Wet Lawrence, Kansas is the site tonight. And the diehards, they're here still. Angus Quigley in the backfield. Starting a series for the first time. With a slant turn in. First goes got it. Makes a miss. Look out. Open field. Inside the 25. Will they get him? Slowing down to the 10 to the 5. He's in. What a magnificent effort by Desmond Lisco. Number 80, Desmond Lisco. Flag down way back, though. Well, that's going to be roughing on the quarterback. They hit to Todd Reesing late. I think this is going to stand as a touchdown. Number 58, defense. And Desmond Briscoe catches another ball across the middle. I tell you, this is a tremendous effort on his part of making something happen after the catch. Look at the count of missed tackles. There's one missed tackle, and there's two. Desmond Briscoe still going. A little judder step there. Three missed tackles, four missed tackles. He takes the fifth tackler into the end zone for the score. What an effort. So 48-yard touchdown reception. Reesing to Briscoe. Sophomore out of Dallas who had 43 grabs last year as a true freshman. And not a bad night so far with a lot of second half to play. Seven for a buck 48. And that is the second touchdown of the night for the Jayhawks. Rancetter in for the point after. Out of the hole to backup quarterback Kerry Meyer. So we saw as a true freshman last year as Rancetter splits the uprights. Briscoe. Accounting for seven touchdowns in 43 grabs. So he was a high percentage guy to begin with, and you can see why. Making a miss in the Louisiana Tech secondary. Plenty of speed and the maneuverability. The Jayhawks up by 20. 
Briscoe with a 48-yard touchdown reception. A keeper for the Kansas Jayhawks and only a sophomore. So we look at the Suzuki scoring drive. And it was a long one. It yeah, took a lot of snaps, didn't it? <laughs> Great effort by Dez Briscoe. That was fun to watch. Livis is back going back deep, waiting for the kick. And because of the roughing the passer, it'll be assessed on the kick. This should go out of the end zone for Brandstetter. He's going to be able to tee it up to 45 instead of the 30. So just about five minutes gone by in the second half. And will it get away from Louisiana Tech now? Yeah, might even be able to kick it into those new seats they have down in the south end zone here. Yeah, wouldn't want to hit anybody down no, there. No, no, wouldn't want to do that. Know. So Brandstetter's first game is Jayhawk, and they're keeping him busy with a couple of field goals, a couple of extra points, and now right at the base of the crossbar. It's out of the back line of the end zone. And wonder why we were talking about those comfortable chairs. Emily Jones. Guys, I was, I was so ready for that ball. I was coming right at me. But uh, anyway, I am in the south end zone. This is one of the newest additions here to the stadium. And as you can see, it is the lap of luxury. I mean, you've got like leather recliners with cup holders. Perfect for the rain. You've got the awning covering you over here. The, the family, the Anderson family addition over here. The, the football complex is done. This is it. What you guys can't see, there are, there are light screen plasma TVs right in front of me where I can see all the action, all the replays, as if I had to look too far on the field. And, and here's the here's the extra bonus. Oh, goodness. Livis is, can they catch him from behind? One man, Livis from behind, pulled down. Hard to believe. What speed, Stucky. The safety caught up with him. I didn't think anybody get the little guy. Well, Emily, you're going to get a good replay in that screen down there for this one because Livis does a good job here on the little reverse and the blocking is superb out in front and there's a lane for him to run. Great speed. We knew he had that. He needs some big plays from him, but Stucky run him down at the two-yard line. That's a great effort. What are the odds that he's going to get Stucky from behind? Man. Or rather, Livis from behind, and Stucky did it. 78 yards on the reverse. They tried that early in the they game. Did. It just didn't block. The hole didn't open up early in the ball game, but that one parted perfectly for Louisiana Tech. On right, first and goal, Jackson trying to get to the outside. Into the backfield. Guess who? Daryl Stucky again, the junior from Kansas City. Now he says, I can step up across the line of scrimmage and make plays too. Young man showing good speed, watching just cut pressure to the outside and good firm tackle. So it's back to six on a loss of four. And that's kind of the story of the running game, unfortunately. For Louisiana Tech, they have not been able to take the heat off Bennett with a balanced attack. Bennett out of the backfield in a shotgun. Little turn in and thrown behind his intended target, trying to get it to Josh Wheeler. He's already got a couple of grabs. Barfield on the coverage. Well, this just shows you the heart of the KU defense and being proud of not allowing teams to score, especially when you get inside the red areas they are here. Ball thrown, as you said, Joel, behind. And if he had thrown it out in front, it probably was going to get hit by the big defensive lineman coming across his, his face. defense around here last year one of the very best in the nation and now it's a third and goal from the six with a shutout working for Kansas six minutes gone here in the third live is the motion man show the blitz and the blitz is coming over the middle off the fingertips of Livis. he was worried about the man behind him that time the heat came it was Stucky again or Megan Strozier. Yeah, I think that was Philip Strozier, the nickelback who came in and did a good job of coming downhill behind the behind Livis. Knocking that ball away, so Louisiana Tech gonna have to try a field goal here. Strozier out of Rockers High School. One of the better high school programs for a long time here in Kansas City. Hostricker, three for three. 28, 48, and 50 yards last week. And the win over Mississippi State. And it's going to be a 28-yard attempt. He pushed it. Blocked it out to the right. They're still not on the board. Talk about frustrating. I think they take pride in defense around here. And Mark Mangino, don't forget, he was an offensive coach before the head coaching job here. 
Now, no doubt about that, that the ball bounces off the top of the right upright and glances, goes out. Yeah, glances right off and outside it. So the shutout continues. After the miss from 28 yards away. It'll be a first and 10 for Kansas. Put it at the 20. And Angus quickly. Two arms around the football. Not a bad idea the way he wrapped it. As he gets across the 23, close to the 24. Grigsby got to him, a sophomore from right and rusted. And what I think uh, Ed Warner, the offensive quarter, would really like to see here for his Kansas offense is a, is a good job of running the football and running it inside and haven't had a lot of success tonight doing that. Averaging around three yards per carry. I can have a little bit of a break out there with one of these tailbacks making, a, making an effort there and get some good yardage for him. Recent. Flooding the left side, looking over to that side of the field. Now, last option, quickly. And quickly, making a miss. Got two when it seemed like he wasn't going to get anything. If anything, a loss of three or four. Brought down by Smith. Tough kid. Angus Quigley. Great football man. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save time and fuel by shopping comfortably at home with Overstock.com. At home with deal. You realize we are only 30 to 40 minutes away from some of the best barbecue in America. I'll drive. <laughs> I know you'll always drive. Gates, we'll for get good, some ribs. We'll get rib, yeah, we'll get Gates ribs. We'll get the spare ribs, and we'll go to Arthur Bryan's for our beef sandwich. You're covered. Third and five from the 25. Now, Reese trying to Adler, be in trouble, and finds the open receiver. Patterson, look out. Kids got some wheels. Making a miss in the secondary. First and 10 to the 31. <laughs> Baker finally caught up, but the true freshman from Dallas, Damon Patterson at 5'9", 175. Well, Patterson caught the early touchdown in this ball game. He's in the middle here at the top of the screen, and this is going to come down, and the defense is going to get, they think the ball's going to be thrown on timing, but it doesn't, so he just works back away from the defender. Good job of getting back there and making something happen after you catch that football. And Racing's only a junior, don't forget. It's a guy out of Austin, Lake Travis High School, so they've got him next year. He just doesn't panic. He consistently surveys the field. And now he's got all day. On the cutback trail, it's good for Wilson. What a scoop by Jonathan Wilson, the sophomore from Houston. They got some Texans on their roster just like Mizzou, don't they? No doubt about that. They've got good players here at Kansas. Mark Mangino's staff has done a great job of recruiting Texas, Kansas, and all over the country for that matter. And recently you look at him here in the pocket and the heady quarterback. Good strong arm delivery down there to Wilson who comes back for me and makes a nice grab. That's Jonathan Wilson, not Anthony Wilson, the jazz guitarist, but Jonathan Wilson, the sophomore. And boy, shook good hands quickly. Lowers his shoulder on the spin. Well, there, there's a little fire in that line now, isn't there? Down to the 12. Brought down by Quinn Harris, the weak side backer. Well, I think the thing that makes this offense go is the balance. The balance you have running the football and passing the football. Like I said, they haven't done a lot running the ball, but as you pass the ball down the field, it's going to open up the run game and vice versa. Four, Offensive seven, line six, takes pride in whatever they're doing, pass blocking or run blocking. And offense very efficient a year ago in their 12 win season. And getting after a good start again here in 2008. They're looking for their 11th consecutive home win overall, 15th straight against non conference opponents. But we'll talk about the second half of their season with their schedule a little bit later tonight. And it is tough. Quickly on the misdirection again, didn't fool anybody. Good play underneath by Nolan Darby, senior inside backer. So it's going to bring up third and long. They've had the big play. Well, they definitely had the big play. See the linebacker scrape up inside here and make a nice firm tackle. And Need some of that, get some negative plays there, which they had. Yeah, you know, it's the consistency they're looking for, Gary, in the five, six yard runs that they have not found over the first game and a half. No, they've had no shorter runs, three, four yards or less. And that's not what they like to have. When you spread people out, you feel like you're going to be able to gash some runs for eight, ten yards at a pop, and that's just not coming yet for Kansas. Third and eight, ball to the 13 of Louisiana Tech. Long count this time by Reese. Little double clutch action. Man. Again. This time it's Raymond Brown, the senior from St. Louis, a guy who converted from defensive back this year to wide receiver. And he's about four yards shy at the nine. Just making people miss. You got a missed tackle there on the outside, but still going to be a fourth down. So Louisiana Tech 
turns him away here, at least for a field goal opportunity. You see Brown going to catch the football and make him miss after that mi and missed tackle. Number 14, Jacob Brandstetter. Brandstetter in for the long field goal by his standards because he's had a couple of chip shots tonight. But this is going to be outside of the 16, call it a 26, 27 yarder. It'll be Kerry Meyer on the hole. And Brandstetter, a perfect three for three to start his Jayhawk career. So a 23 to nothing lead now for Kansas. Inside of five left in the third. And officially we'll call it a 26 yard field goal by Brandstetter. Yeah, looking now at our Hampton in touchdown of the game thus far. Is there any question? 48 yarder Desmond Briscoe. What an effort. Des Briscoe does a good job here breaking tackle after tackle in route to the end zone. And tremendous effort on his part and just staying alive and keeping his feet and getting that touchdown. Kansas had some short drives like that one. One play, 48 yards. Earlier they had an 80 yard drive. It was only three minutes off the clock. That was eight plays, 71 yards, and it barely took four minutes. The quick striking offense of the Jayhawks. So as much as we talked about nine and a half minutes, and Louisiana Tech hanging under the football doesn't mean a thing if you can't get it in. So time of possession misleading, very misleading. Jackson is going to be deep, not Limas. Back with Philip Beck. Yeah, on the kick, it'll be back. Back at the two. It's a little cruise up to the left side on a wall. Man, past the 23, they'll put him down. So let's see if there's any opportunity for recovery now for Louisiana Tech on our Suzuki scoring drive. I mentioned that's a long drive, but Kansas is standards tonight. Four minutes off the clock. And eight plays and covered to 71 yards. Pretty good job of moving the ball down the field and putting points up there. Louisiana Tech, you know, one of the things that I, I haven't really noticed from this team is a, is a capability for a vertical passing game. They've had too much pressure by Kansas's defense on the quarterback, and he's had to throw the ball away too many times. So haven't had a chance to take the ball down the field. And what that allows, it allows the secondary to really tighten up on the receivers. Yeah, Daniel Porter at tailback. And Bennett, blind side, he's going to take it and off target barely. Wow, and that was wide a, open Anthony Harrison. No doubt that he was wide open to him. There was a miscommunication in the Kansas defense, and that ball was on timing and hit him. You're going to see him here. He's going to be available now at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see the receiver right there down the field and watch him come out here. There's nobody there. This ball is just overthrown by Bennett. Wow, that's one that got away from him. Well, it's tied in. And do you think a wide receiver maybe can adjust a little bit easier than a big guy like Harrison? So now it's going to be second and ten from the 25. Porter stays in the backfield. They're looking for the first first down of the second half. And doing a good job with the flag down out of the secondary and also one from the referee, Arist Wright, in on the hit. And let's find out about the, and they may be offsetting. Yeah, they saw the same hold and it's on the tight end Dustin Mitchell. Yeah, just giving him too much cloth there, pull off to pull him down and do a tackle there. You see him taking him to the ground. So the wide side about an eight yard gain for Daniel Porter and those have been tough to come by for Derek Dooley and Louisiana Tech down by 23. They've had a couple of good opportunities tonight to get on the board. First half, long drive, interception of the end zone, and the missed field goal, a short one. Yeah. Been doing that time. James Hole bringing down Patrick Jackson, the senior from Algis, Oklahoma. Honorable mention, all Big 12. And we talked about those three at the top of the telecast, the three linebackers. Right, just look at that penetration there coming inside, no doubt about that. Getting in the backfield. As an offensive lineman, you've got to hold those guys out. This team going without uh, their offensive line coach, uh, Petey Payro, uh, who in the preseason training camp had a, come down with a, had to have a triple bypass heart surgery and 
not with the football team. Bennett finally had some time, and then it collapsed. It'll be Jeff Wheeler, the defensive end, a sophomore from Houston. With a half a sack last week in his first career start, now he's got one solo. Now this defense is just shining now for Kansas, and uh, they can kind of smell it here, protecting their turf, which they do so well, and one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Nice effort there, nice rush. So the Kansas defense getting better as the game progresses. With 3 13 and counting left in the third, and they've yet to give up the first down in the second, off, uh, second half on four possessions. Now by the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. It'll be Patterson waiting for the Kegel punt. Didn't have a lot of space back there, did he? And Patterson. Oh! Simultaneous, but no, they're going to say there was contact prior to the ball going into his hands. First one down there, the guy that came under him, Alex Anderson for Louisiana Tech. So a penalty to compound the problems for the Bulldogs. Well, two things on that. First of all, you close the gap. You give him illegal kick-catch interference there, so you, that's going to be it. But then he hits him low, which was really surprising, and maybe he's just trying to slow down and hold his momentum. I don't really know, but nonetheless, it's definitely interfered with. Where's the halo when you need one? A minute ago, I talked about uh, Petey Payro not with the, uh, the team. They've got Art Cahoe, former Miami line coach. He's now working with the offensive line and in Petey's absent, but I know he's listening back home in Ruston, Louisiana, and want to shout out to Petey, a former Northwestern Demon, my alumni. And Interference with the opportunity to make the catch. 15 yard penalty, spot of the foul. First down. But you asked Eric Dooley about Petey, and it was good to hear that he is on the road. Oh, yeah, he's definitely on the road to recovery, Petey. You're not going to get him down. I know him too well, and uh, he's, a, he's a great player. He had a good, great career in the National Football League and one of the most respected line coaches. 20 years at Louisiana Tech. I tell you, he's been, he's been at that program a long time and one of the best uh, line coaches in, the, in college football. So the markoff will take it down to about the 41 of Tech. Final three minutes of the third, which has been a real slow, uneven third 15 minutes of play. Whistles, flags, reviews. So now it's going to be Reesing and the offense back out there, and they can ice it pretty early tonight. I'm, I'm seeing too much yellow on the field, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> They've got another flag out here. He's brought up groceries. Groceries are where we're headed, and it's going to be a while. That's for tonight. Kansas, 15-yard penalty. Ooh. The first is 25. Well, there's going to be a coach on this near sideline not happy. There must have been somebody saying something. Well, that may have been on the coach. <laughs> Emily Jones, I know she's on top of it for us. Sharp in the backfield. Along with quickly. That was a dead ball foul, so it's going to be first and 25. It's a long throw for a screen. And Patterson. Yes. Jonathan Wilson tried to block for him. Got about five to the midfield strike right down by Stevon House. Boy, it takes so long when you go to the wide side on a throw like that for a slip screen. And all they're looking for, though, is that one block. Right. If you can get that one guy out of the way, you've got a chance to make a big play, and that's what they're trying for in that, uh, with that long throw. Little guy can throw it, though. That's 5'11", Todd Reesing. He has hit seven consecutive. He has 25 of 30 for the game now. 338 yards passing with two touchdowns. I don't need to know a quarterback rating when I hear numbers like that. Dragging people along the way, Angus Quigley. He sounds like a guy who would drag you along the way. From the 39, he takes it. And now it's going to be third manageable. Well, good job of popping through the hole here, a little misdirection in the backfield, and just works his way through there and just banging through guys. So good job by Quigley. That young man is from Cleburne, Texas at 6'2", 220 pounds. It continues to what we talked about earlier. Missouri, Kansas, and you could look at a lot of rosters in the Big 12 that have dumped into the Lone Star State. They have dipped in and taken a lot of talent. Now on third down, Blitz, and behind him, but still Patterson adjusted. Look out to the 15, to the 10, he's gone. Touchdown, Kansas. Touchdown, Kansas. 
So much for a first to 25. Well, they've got three guys out here. You got the group outside, and then they're going to take it across the middle of the field, and no one's going to catch him. Just look at this area up here that he's going to run through. There's no one there. He just outruns the rest of the defense. Excellent job by Patterson of running away from them, and Todd Reesing of finding an open crossing receiver. They've done that all night against this uh, Louisiana Tech defense. Brandstetter gets no. He pulled it. It was wide left. So they missed one last week. They were four or five on extra point tries, and now another miss. Well, this young man, Gary, was first team All State at both wide receiver and kick returner in Mesquite, Texas. Really gifted young kid. Yeah, very talented. And I'm sure that Mark Mangino is happy to have him here with his program. Be a good addition to this offense. So they used true freshmen like Briscoe last year and it paid off. Look at the numbers now there. Patterson. He catches on the night buck 30 and a couple of scores. It comes with a minute 21 to play here in the third. So Kansas continues their role at home, which is the second longest winning streak at home in Jayhawk history. You've got to go back to a longer one. The only other one was 15 straight. You remember the years, don't you? 1908, yeah, 09, 10. Cut you. Boy, well, we're working up oh, here. Oh my goodness, we got it. it. Look, look at that chair she's on. It's got, it's got the nice stitching back there. Everything. She's got the big screen. She's got the groceries in front of her. I love your job, girl. Listen, I am braving it out here in the rain. The least I can do is take a break, kick my feet up, eat some food, and uh, enjoy this one. I had a front row right seat ahead. for that last touchdown. It's the best part about these seats right here. They kick up. Oh, yeah. yeah, and obviously the smorgasbord doesn't <laughs> hurt either. No, not at all. <laughs> to the 23 on the return, it's Philip back, brought down by Drew Dudley. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. In case you need to give those feet a little rest, which I think I've, I've, I've earned it tonight, guys. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> Gary, I think we'll let reasons be the judge of that. She's she's fine. She can hang out down there. She's doing a good day. It's the weather. You know, it's a bad hair day for, for a gal down there. <laughs> well, you're in something along the way, aren't you? From the 23, first and 10. It'll be Jackson to the backfield. Quick one. Goes over to the other side. And it goes outside. First catch for Eric Feeke, a true freshman. From Santee, California, at 5'8, 165. So, not a big guy, but he showed some decent wheels. Barfield pushes him out. And the gain is about four yards. That's nine, well, that had been nine consecutive incompletions. His first over the last 10 tries for Taylor Bennett, young man who went to Lafayette High School in St. Louis, the same high school as Ryan Howard, home run hitter for the Philadelphia Phillies. Final minute of the third in a forgettable third for Louisiana Tech. Bennett out of bounds, losing yardage. You know, Joel, we talked to Derek Dooley and uh, offense coordinator Frank Seflo about uh, this Kansas football team, particularly the Kansas defense. They, they said they, they are tremendously well coached, first and foremost, but they are big, they're strong, they're physical, and they, you know, they, they continually play hard all the time. They're going to punish you in the secondary and the linebackers and all of them. You take the linebackers, the group of them, they're 6'3", 250 pounds, but when they bring it to you, I mean, they, they pack a wallet. Nothing has gone down the field against uh, Kansas except for the one long run there on the little reverse by Livas. Well, Bennett is trying to pick up the first first down of the second half. The blitz comes from Rivera. Bennett doesn't have a choice. Matt dumped on the run by Daryl Stuckey. They got some speed on this defense. Well, what's really good about Daryl Stuckey, what he does is get off the block. He gets off the block and makes a play. And All 67 offense, decline, fourth down. Well, anybody who can play football like this, Daryl Stuckey's had a nice night, and he's going to be at the top of the screen up here. And he's in coverage, and a re receiver coming across and sees him there, and then he just sees the block and it gets off of it. That's what you like to see in a defender in the open space. And I know it's early, but we've got some candidates in this game for Kansas for 
some players of the week in the Big 12. And Stuckey stands out over three quarters of play as that's going to be the end of three. Well, there's a guy defensively who we've singled out tonight and has done a good job. And let's see if Reesing sticks around much more because he's already thrown for 383 yards. That kind of night for the Kansas Jayhawks. It has picked up for them ever since the first quarter. 29 to nothing through three as we'll be right back to Lawrence. College football Saturday continues from Lawrence, Kansas. Welcome back once again for the final 15 minutes of regulation. Joel Myers, Gary Reasons, Emily Jones under the canopy in the end zone. <laughs> and now it's going to be Cagle punting it away once again. And that's been the story for Louisiana Tech. They have not been able to move the football at all in the second half. They had a very efficient drive in the first half, but came away without points. And it was a crusher. Nine and a half minute drive. Low line driver turnable one for Damon Patterson from the 36. Got a lane. Kid's got some speed. And he's out of the midfield strike. Who's part of our what a burger, what a play. Because he had the first touch on our play. But this kind of night has been there all the way. Patterson, Briscoe, look at I found. You know, opportunities for the ball, and uh, they're going Kansas's way. No doubt about that tonight. So all the breaks, all the bounces, working for the Jayhawks. But you make your own breaks, and they've had the advantage from the beginning. Well, Reason's already thrown for a career best, 383, and he's back out there. As it's going to be quickly sliding sideways through the hole, making the most of the opportunity. Best run of the night by a tailback. He's down to the 38. Right down to the free safety Baker. Antonio Baker. Yeah, three out of four is not bad. As they started with that three and out in the punt. Game of 13 on the play, first and 10. In the so it would have been 17, but the missed extra point, but a 16 point third quarter for the Jayhawks. Looking for more now at the 38. It's the 38 of Louisiana Tech. And the ultimate for both teams right now is to keep the clock moving. Darby brought down quickly as he tried to go between his center and guard on the right side. It's a game of about three. So you talk about these programs, Joel, and you talk about how, you know, how the evolution has become for, for Kansas, and it comes down to one word, and it's consistency. And uh, Mark Mangino with what he's done both offensively, defensively, and recruiting, trying to create a lot of consistency in their program, with their personnel, with what they're doing, with their coaching staff. He caught it, he lost it, he gets it back. And they're going to say he never made that one step, that football move with possession. Coming across the middle, you knew there was going to be a pop waiting. Hadn't had much trouble with the other ones coming across the field. This ball catches it. I think he makes a football move. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, that may be taking a look at again. So. So if you catch the ball squarely and you make one or two steps, that's considered a football move, which he does. He comes back, the ball comes loose. I think that's going to be ruled a fumble and a catch if they review it, but maybe not here late in the ball game. These, these replay officials, they look at these things, they say, is it a major impact in the ball game? And they're probably considering that one not. Well, that's the key, the word impact. Does it impact the game? Because they want the game to move. Racing in trouble. Man, they finally get to it. Todd Reese it's to Anthony Smith the, the guys on the edge pushed him up you know and that's a little difference between what he does and what Taylor Bennett does for Louisiana Tech Todd Reese is willing to try to make something happen with his feet Taylor Bennett he's going to throw the ball away and not take a sack that's the mark of a pocket quarterback and where Reese is a little bit more of a scat back type quarterback and he's got some ability to make something happen with his feet instead of perhaps get a sack but when he's definitely in the pocket it's it's a collapsing around it that's not the best decision Rojas in to punt it away. He had a 46 yard average in the opener last week. Short field this time, though, as the Tech did a good job defensively. Three and out. And a real high one. Beck stays away from it. It'll roll inside the 10. And a good job of the Jayhawks. They did not touch it. He'll be back at about the 8 9 yard line. Yeah, will they bring it back? Yes, it was actually tucked slightly outside of the 15 near the 16. Time into the field. Come right back to Lawrence. 
Taylor Bennett and the Tech offense back out there. And Gary Reasons, you were talking about it while we were away. So you want to be a quarterback in Division One. Yeah, you want to be a quarterback. Well, you got to have some toughness. And Taylor Bennett, he's tough. He's been in the pocket all night having to throw the ball away. But just look at these shots that he's been taking tonight, folks. That's a relentless defense there by the Kansas Jayhawks. And they know what to do with a quarterback. You put a lot of pressure on him to hit him and give good coverage in the secondary. And that's a formula for defensive success. Nice hole that time opened up for Daniel Porter. As he races across the 20, out to the 23, dropped by Joe Mortensen. While we were, before we went away on that uh, break, you were talking about the consistency here at Kansas now. And uh, while you bring up what's going on at Kansas, it's the seventh year for Mark Mangino. There's no doubt after talking to Derek Dooley and his staff, it's only their second year. Yeah, it's only their second year, but they've uh, they've made some strides. Right. I mean, one of the things that they've been trying to do there is to establish some of the things that they need to get quality, more quality football players into their program. and. They're not the longest division, tenured Division 1A program either. Just in the late 80s, they, they became a 1A program, and they've kind of been moving along almost 20 years now as a Division 1A program. And one of the things they haven't done is necessarily commit to the facilities and the things that you need to have in place that really attract top quality athletes. That's one of the things that Derek Dooley has gotten started and really has changed. There are some new facilities and things for, for the Louisiana Tech program up in Ruston, Louisiana that are attractive now to, to, to student athletes. And he feels that they're turning the, turning the corner now, being able to get some of those top athletes into their program. It's a complete on the sideline as it's taken in by Josh Wheeler. And to tag that, when we started, well, Mark Mangino seven years ago when we were all here his first year, they were on an old lumpy old field behind oh, yeah. Allen Fieldhouse. <laughs> now they've got a new football office stuff. facility right next to the stadium. Uh, two huge fields side by side practice facilities. Not far away, maybe another hundred yards from the football offices. You can say all you want about recruiting, but you know the, those things are enticing to young student athletes coming here and they say, hey, this is a wow factor. And whoever you're bringing in as recruits, if you can show them, hey, we've got the tools here in place so that you're going to have a great college experience. We're going to make you a better player. We're gonna, we have the tools necessary to do that. That's the commitment that you make to your program and to the student athletes when they come here. And guys, that Anderson Family Football Complex was a $31 million venture. It's 80,000 square feet. It's got housing only the football team and, and the football program. And they've got a weight room in there, the locker room, obviously, an audio video room, uh, also a hydrotherapy room. They've got everything they need right here within walking distance, which, as you guys know, Mark Mangino talked to us about it, how big that is to have everything right here. Yeah, he said that half of that facility is actually built into the hill there. You see it there on the left, and as you look, that's looking from the south to the north through this stadium. So that's a tremendous complex that they have all football, all football. So right here, a good place for them to walk out. And immediately to the right of that, on the east side of the stadium, are the two practice fields. And they're just they're just not drop dead gorgeous. You got anything you ever want out there. Yeah, they've upgraded the facility completely. And Derek Dooley talked to us about it. Uh, things they need to do and accomplish, and the consistency it will also bring. Yeah, they've, they've made a lot of changes to Joy Light Stadium there in, in, in Ruston and a lot of other facility changes there that are on the underway. And that's what you need to do. You need to do those things because they're keeping up with the Joneses, so to speak. You have to do those to attract the top talent. That last pass was complete to Dennis Morris, but it was offensive pass interference. And that's why they took it all the way back and marked it off. As, as Patrick Jackson is brought down by the combination of Stucky and Rivera over to the right side, past the 30, out to the 31-yard line. So we approach the 10 minute mark left. It's a shutout so far for Kansas. A couple of opportunities have been there to get on the board though for Louisiana Tech. 29 to nothing Jayhawks. After they beat Florida International last week, 40 to 10 here in Lawrence. Bennett going to the tight end, Dustin Mitchell. He spun around short of the first down by a couple by Joe Mortensen. And we talked about the Kansas linebackers as we started this, started this telecast tonight. James Holt, Joe Mortensen, Mike Rivera. The, those trio of linebackers, really they do a great job of leading this defense. All of them seniors, all of them are great, uh, great athletes in their own right. But what they do defensively, they tie the front of the defense to the back of the defense. But what I mean by that is they're able to take care of the run game and even also they assist in the pass rush but they also do a good job in coverage. So those three linebackers really set the tone here for Kansas. Bennett underneath, resourceful that time. Getting the first down and going to Dustin Mitchell. Gary, are they across the board, those three linebackers? 
the most consistent threesome in the Big 12 going into the new season because of the experience. Three seniors that have all been, at least honorable mention, if not first team all Big 12. Well, they've all got the starts. They've got the experience. 27 starts now for a couple of them there. Joe Mortensen and Mike Rivera. James Holt this be his 17th start of his career. So that much playing experience gives you the ability to be, have a lot of consistency in your play in the front seven, in the back seven, however you want to play those guys in there. So James Holt, probably the guy who comes out on, on some nickel packages where they need two linebackers in there and gets replaced by a nickel back. But overall, those three players really are the ones that tie the front to the back. Yeah, they've lost a couple of guys up front. McClintock, yeah, one in particular, the underneath tackle. Well, you know, we got a guy who's on the, oh, was a cornerback, Tlaib, who, you know, one of the best players in the conference and uh, having a pretty good NFL start, I think. I saw him during the preseason. He looks like a, like a pro, like a veteran already. Loved it when he was here in Kansas and uh, Coach Mangino just trying to figure out what's the best way to play him, offense, defense, and I think he fit in pretty well with everything they did. It'll be Damon Patterson taking it back at the 12. Kid can escape, can he? Young man gets outside. He ran out of racing room on the sideline, so he is gone out of bounds at the 14, but the catalyst again, Todd Reese. Career best night as he's already thrown for 383 yards. Kansas has it back deep in their own territory, and they've got it under control with a little more than eight and a half to play. You know, tonight's Polaris Ranger, hardest working player. Is there any doubt? And a high percentage for his 383, 27 of 33, with three touchdowns and no interceptions. How's that for the model of efficiency and working hard? And actually, it seemed kind of effortless to me. He's just a smart guy, knows what he's doing with it, and the play calling's been, been superb for him. Ed Warner, his offensive coordinator, giving the Pretty good tutelage to that young man. Yeah, let's give some credit to Spikes, Mays, Cantrell, Hartley, and Jeremiah Hatch in his first start of the new season. And his first career start at right tackle. And he's trying to spin it outside as Angus Quinton. A little stiff arm for about two or three. And I bring that up because you talked about it while we were away. We discussed the pocket protection. Reesing has not been touched all that often tonight. Yeah, you got the three seniors inside starting for him. Starts with Ryan Cantrell there and then Hartley and Mays on either side as guards. And then Hatch and Mays, on, excuse me, Hatch and Spikes on the outside. Both redshirt freshmen. How are they going to evolve and how are they going to turn out as, as, as players here for this Kansas offense? You know, they're only going to be as good as that offensive line is offensively because it all starts there. They did a nice job today defensively, I think, against Louisiana Tech. When they did bring pressure, they, for the most part, they kept uh, Todd Reeson pretty clean. It'll be second and six. Quick one for Meyer at the sideline. He's close to the marker. Let's see where they put it. Looks like he's going to be just short. On the nose of the football on the 23. Bumped out by the free safety, Antonio Baker. Well, Meyer is the backup quarterback, don't forget, behind Reesing. So if you're saying, well, let's take Reesing out, Meyer's on the field already. And they haven't gotten close, as we mentioned, to Reesing. Yeah, he's been pretty clean back there, so I don't think there's much risk of, of him. And this is just their offense that they run. It's just they're going to find, take what the defense gives you. They're going to spread you out. They're going to read. They're going to see how many people you got in the box. For instance, they've got five, six players in the box right here. They'll run the ball against that. And that's what they do. Quigley. Man. Carrying him with him across the 30, out to the 31. He's got about seven yards. He's buying some time, by the way. Angus quickly. Jake Sharp started the game with Jock Crawford, but they've been very efficient on the ground with Angus quickly running very hard. So the clock moves to the seven minute mark. Just get out of here healthy, guys, both sides. That's the key. It'll be second and three. Driving him back, stacking him up, Mason hit the sophomore from Baton Rouge. You know, the, the one thing everybody said, and you and I talked about it earlier last year, was the schedule for Kansas. Last year they missed Texas, they missed Texas Tech, and they missed Oklahoma. Now these are their last six games. How tough are these last six? Well, you got those three guys right there. They're all ranked in the top top 10 in the country currently, and uh, I'm not sure that's going to change a whole lot here as this season moves along because they're pretty good football teams. But that that is a tough schedule here for Kansas, and boy, if they can get through that uh, without a whole lot of damage, that would be one heck of an effort by this team. They need a yard. Meyer gets it. Can we go back to that panel? Because I, I do want to go over those six once again. 
You just like the pain, don't well, you? No, I, I want to figure out how many <laughs> wins they can potentially get. Be, Reesing, they've got a seasoned quarterback, Oklahoma at home. Bradford, his sophomore season, he threw for more yards than any freshman quarterback well, last year. You got Tech here. I think the stretch there, Texas Tech, Kansas State, Nebraska, you're going to think consistently that Kansas is going to be in those ball games. And then the other three, you've got Oklahoma, Texas, and Missouri. Those are the ones that are probably going to come down to the wire. Really, who's going to have the better day that day? And remember, they hung 76 on Nebraska here. So they go to Nebraska. That's going to be more difficult than people think quickly lowering his shoulder that was a serious collision but you look at that last six and if they could go for it two in that last six that's not bad no that's not a bad run at all those are pretty good football teams in there this conference top to bottom now is really uh, especially the north has really come alive in the last few seasons the north has not been the powerhouse of juggernaut but what missouri did last year what kansas did last year really set the table for the North to really be a more prominent figure in the in the landscape of college football. It'll be second at about four. And we joked about it at the top of the telecast, Kansas, great basketball school, national champions with a kick out for the wide receiver Meyer. And he got that Harry Meyer. Raymond Brown. So another first down as they move the chains to the 49. Another first down marker all brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop with a company that supports college football. Overstock.com at home with the O. And who would have believed just a few years ago, Gary Pinkle, eighth year at Missouri. Mark Mangino, seventh year. Missouri was a better basketball school than a football school over the last, say, 30 years because, well, take it to Norm Stewart. Norm Stewart had a nice, nice run at Missouri. So I'm taking it a little bit too far back. But Kansas has always been solid in basketball. Now these two schools, all of a sudden, they're prominent football schools. Well, they've got them both programs. They've got the basketball and the football programs going well. And, and what they've done, Joel, both similarly have both committed to facilities, committed to the football programs to do things. And, you know, Coach Self, he talked about it. He said, football, look at it. It's a revenue sport. It's a tremendous revenue opportunity for the programs. And so it's a good investment to go into the football programs with, with some of your assets and your resources because they'll pay dividends in the long run especially if you get good players in the house and you'll be able to win a lot of football games yeah and it's dramatic what has changed at missouri just like here at kansas it's consistent when it comes to the compound the the actual facility itself i mean they've gone state-of-the-art as well just like kansas where before go over to brewer field house and some of those areas and it was back 50 years when you take a look down in, in the south the big 12 south you look at the look at the facilities there Texas going to almost 100,000 in their stadium, 98,000. I was there last week, the largest ever crowd to watch a game in the state of Texas, and uh, that was pretty pretty impressive to see that many folks in the house. Texas A&M, always great facilities. OU, what they've got there in Oklahoma State, there's probably going to be none better than what's going to be being built with Boone Pickens Stadium there in Stillwater. So right. I tell you, it's an arms race. It really is in the, in the Big 12 and all across the country to get facilities that are enticing to student athletes. And guys, let's not forget the athletic directors that have stuck by these coaches right. and not made rash decisions to get another coach in. They've been patient and it's paid off for both Kansas and Missouri. Yeah, and Emily, as you chime in, you're the consistency. Staying with what you're destined to do with the program and staying with that head coach. As opposed to three or four years later, deciding, well, Actually, it's a bad year, it's a down year, even though there was a good year two years ago, we got to make a change again. Yeah. Weldon Brown bringing down the receiver. The as he's taken in. Short Weldon the first down Brown. with penalty flag down. And number 90, Mason Hitch. You know, also consistency with these football programs and is really the consistency in their coaching staffs. You know, you've got the head guy there, but really the guys that are underneath that, the coordinator at the coordinator level and some of the key position coaches, those guys being Little consistent. In the back, in the back. 50 offense, 10 yard penalty, replay Thursday. It was during the play, so I, I got here in time Thursday night, and we're talking about Kansas and the improvement to the football program that nobody even seven years ago when they won two games, Mark Mangino's first year, and I went to Hawk Talk because it was Mark Mangino's show. Well, you, you've been there before, too. I love this. Well, remember early on? You did, hadn't you been there before? No. Seen, With, seen the show before? No, I had not seen the Mark's radio show, Hawk it Talk, was, and it was good. It was entertaining. Well, they take the emails and calls, and one was, are we going to put another deck on the football <laughs> stadium like Texas? 
and he started laughing on air and I was in the crowd watching he said well, the cons he brought up the word consistency regularly and he said once th that the program has consistently been winners then you can approach that and think about putting another deck on it quickly doing a good job trying to get to the marker and he's right there close to the first down but I lived large for Hawk Talk on Thursday night here in Lawrence. <laughs> Mark Mangino had a good time with the show uh, he said they're going to start syndicating that show I love it <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. So it's a first down quickly with the extra effort. Got to it. Final 313 and counting. We like coming to Lawrence and a lot of these Big 12 cities. They've got a good thing going. You know, I'll tell you, just going down the Massachusetts Street in downtown Lawrence and seeing all the all the revelry that's around here. You got a basketball program, won the national championship and all the all the goods that are out there on the street in the marketplace. Boy, look at the good run here by Quigley. Yeah, Quigley's buying some more snaps next week, by the way. He's down inside the 25, the 22. Terry Carter on the stop. And Angus Quigley is their leading rusher tonight. Before that carry, he had 11 for 54. It's coming back, though, unfortunately. Hmm. Well, you got some reserve offensive linemen in the game here, but they're trying to get some experience. But Quigley as well, he... Uh... Junior from Cleburne, Texas. He's got some good moves, doesn't he? Well, he's powerful. You know, he'll lower his shoulder on you. He's also looks like he's got enough speed in the open field to make people miss and break tackles. Yeah, he's big enough to get through at 6'2", 225. But he also, the quick feet, the way he's been shifting from side to side to make a miss. So now it's going to be first and 20 back at the 48. And we started this conversation a few snaps ago regarding Derek Dooley and the Louisiana Tech program. Going back to it, the original premise was give Derek Dooley time. It will happen at Louisiana Tech with the commitment. Quigley in across the 50 down to the 49. Well, and being that he's the athletic director also now at Louisiana Tech, uh, the only 1A, Division 1A head football coach and athletic director in college football. So. You know, he's right there. He understands what it's going to take to, to, to make the changes and the necessary changes to help Louisiana Tech grow as a program on the football side. But he also deals with all the other sports which have similar needs and wants. And so that's something that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out over Derek Dooley over the next two to three years with that program. He's a really bright young guy. Brings a lot to Louisiana Tech. Uh, he's a, an attorney, graduate of the law school at Georgia. His wife is a doctor. Yeah, his, his, his mother. Calls him. Got a little pet nickname for him. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I just quickly. What does his mom call him? He's got the first down. Uh, she, she calls him precious. She knows what she says. <laughs> That's good stuff. I love it. Yeah. Baker gets to quickly finally, but it's another first down. They're just trying to run out the clock with a minute 36 to play. Well, there's 20 seconds on the play clock. Is Todd Reese going to snap that ball anytime soon? Probably not. Snapped it with 15. Hmm. Quigley has been their horse in the second half. And he's made the most of his chances. Well, our Polaris ATV toughest play of the game. Now try to catch up with this water boat. He's fast. And that's Livis. But Stucky did it. Surprised us, didn't it? I, I think Stucky earns the right of being called the fastest man in the house tonight here in Lawrence. Tremendous speed coming from the far side of the field, nonetheless, to track down Livis. And tremendous effort there on the defensive play. Second and about three. Final 40 seconds should be the last snap. And it will be. And Stucky, who was an honorable Big 12 all, all conference selection and probably uh, raised a couple of points there in the eyes. And, you know, when coaches start seeing that kind of speed and talent, opposing coaches, I mean, they'll, they'll start looking at those uh, potential honors. So it's all over now. And it was a career night for Mark Mangino's quarterback, Todd Reese, 32 of 38, Gary, and he had a career best. 412 yards. Well, I, I talked about spreading the wealth around and spreading it around to different players, and they certainly did that tonight. Des Briscoe had a tremendous night. Again, Kerry Meyer also chipped in. Found a little run game there towards the end of the end of the evening with what Quigley was doing for him. So I think that Mark Mangino was probably got to be pretty pleased with this football team offensively tonight, and the defense shined as well. Yeah, he shared it. Seven guys caught balls from Todd Racing. Complete night offensively and defensively as we'll be right back to Lawrence.
College Football Saturday, all presented by Suzuki. Quad Fair 2008 is here. Get the best deals, lowest financing of the year on Suzuki's full line of performance-driven ATVs. Visit your local dealer today. Also brought to you in part by Whataburger. Give me a triple right now, please. Just like you like it. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Responsibility, what's your policy? So a complete effort by the Jayhawks. Boy, do they take over in the second half defensively. 29 to nothing, our final as we head downstairs and join Emily Jones. Guys, thank you. Coach Mangino, your defense pitches a shutout. You got to be proud of that. Yes, uh, played great, uh, made some great stops, uh, made a terrific play down here on the one yard line, uh, held them. Uh, they missed a field goal. We played well on defense again this week. On offense, we put up a lot of a lot of numbers. Didn't put a lot of points up, but we moved the ball well. Got to work on red zone offense a little bit, but overall, it was a good night for us. Todd stayed clean. He was efficient, and your receivers made some great plays after the catch. Well, they did. They did. We have a good receiving core. Uh, for the first time in a long time, we have a bunch of receivers that can catch the ball and make yardage after the catch, which is very important. Coach 2-0 and at home. Now you hit the road. You ready for South Florida? We're, we'll, we'll be ready to go. All right, Coach. Thanks so much for the time. Mark Mangino, guys. As I mentioned, the Jayhawks now 2-0. and Back up to you. All right, Emily. And the weather, the precipitation, something they could see Friday night, short work week, preparation for South Florida. Well, it didn't dampen the spirits here of this football team or the crowd. They came out well tonight. I was really impressed with Todd Reesing and how he performed. Got the ball around to a lot of guys in the defense. It shined again. The linebackers, they're pretty darn good. Yeah. Need better balance, though. The running game has to complement the passing game. Well, the, the run game is going to come. When you spread people out and you throw the ball vertically down the field, which they did a little bit tonight, that run game is going to open up as well. Enjoyed it once again, Gary. Next week, college football Saturday is all presented by Suzuki, and it returns. Washington State Cougars of Pac-10 heading down to the Lone Star State, matching up with the Big 12's Baylor Bears. It all starts...